All right, this is test number two. I am going to be... Had some weird things happen this morning, folks. So I'm... Okay. It looks like it's working now. Sometimes weird stuff happens. So, hey, I'm Tom Vassell, and you're watching the most boring um, setup ever. Actually, even though I always say that sort of thing, I'm going to say that that's likely not true in this case. Uh, so if you are here watching, I'm, I'm assuming people are going to show up at some point in time. So if you are uh, watching, if you can give me a little bit of a, a shout out, just so I know that people are there. Um, this is the Dice Tower Studios. We're still setting it up. This is day seven of a projected 10 day uh, setup. So um, I'm going to just pop in here and see real quick. All right. Looks, it looks like we're doing okay. Let me see if the sound is okay. All right, folks, if you can hear me, just let me know. I just want to make sure that the sound is working. I don't know why I have the... Uh... All right, sound is good. All right, so for those of you who are watching, um, I'm not going to waste a lot of time here because I really do got to work. But what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be just working on the library here. And uh, I'll maybe answer some questions while we do so. I hooked up a better mic and things. Now, I get here early in the morning. I'm the first person here. So you may see other people from the Dice Tower come in and come through here at the moment since I'm right by the front door. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through the library shelf by shelf and starting the sorting out process. Now, the sorting out process is going to be longer and more detailed later. But what I'm going to be doing now is starting with shelf one and going all the way up to shelf 25. I don't know if I'll get it all done today. Probably not. Is I'm going to be looking through each shelf, sorting them out, maybe taking a game off the shelf, culling a game, um, seeing if the game's on the wrong shelf, things like that. So um, that's pretty much all I'm doing. I'm going to be kind of sorting things out, but at the same time, I'm going to talk to you guys about what I'm doing here. So uh, and by the way, like if you have any questions about anything, go ahead and ask them here in the uh, in the chat, and I'll try to get to them as time goes by. So we'll make this a Q&A and me setting things up. So this is the Dice Tower Library. Um, you'll notice that the lighting here is much better than it was before. And this room is not set up for lighting for recording purposes and also not for sound. You might even hear my voice bouncing off the wall and stuff. But what this is set up for is... I want to be able to see the library. So I put the brightest possible lights. There's one right above me here. There's one oh, back there. You can actually see that one, I think, right? Yeah, it's like a big shining bulb in your eyesight. And then there's a couple over there. And we I bought the brightest lights possible because I want to be able to see all the different things. So I'm excited about this whole studio. I think it's fantastic. There's still some, you know, you can see bare wall there. I'll fix that. We'll put some stuff up to make it. Uh, I don't know, a little geekier and things like that. So um, let me over here, and here we go. So, and again, sound is going to get uh, worse the farther I am away from the microphone. But anyway, so shelf one. So I'm going to be talking about a lot of games here out loud. So we got Treasure Island to start with, Porto, Jorvik. I'm also facing the, facing the shelves, we call this when I work. Both copies of El Dorado, Santa Maria, and then we come to my first section of the library, which is uh, the portal section. So we have Monothoy Arena, the new version of Preta Porte, Alien Artifacts, Legacy, the Testament of Duke Crazy, 51st State, Imperial Settlers, and then here we're going to do our first culling, actually. 
We have Imperial Settlers and Empire of the North. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Imperial Settlers Empires of the North. It's a fantastic game. Um, but uh, I don't think we need two copies of it in the library. So here's where I do it quick. i got to open both copies and see which copy is better. Actually, they both say... I think they're the same thing, actually. I think I have the expansions in both of them. Imperial Settlers is a game that I can put expansions in. This one looks good. See, the thing is, folks, when I'm sorting out games, the thing, that, the, the thing about the library is, is you don't need duplicate copies of most games. People think you do, but you really don't because only hot games are going to get played by that many people. Um, how can we view what's in the Dice Tower Library at BGG Link? Uh, of sorts, although it's not up to date at this point in time. Um, once I'm done going through this initial run, that's one of the things we're going to do. We're going to be doing a complete overhaul of our Board Game Geek library. We're also we are having a library in another place where people will be able to check it up. Um, so... Alrighty, so, oh yeah, so I didn't check the other Empire's North. I'm going to keep the one that's better. <whistles> ah. They both look good, unfortunately. So we're just going to take out this one. And then what, you know, the first spot that these will go to when I pull them out of the library like this is if, if Dice Tower West wants them, we'll be sending them out Dice Tower West. But that's one game. So I'm not going to fill this hole immediately because I might have, I want, I'm just going to be going through the shelves a little at a time here, one at a time. All right, so now we have on the shelf two, Rajas of the Ganges, Candomir, Seasons, Lords of Zidic, Dice Town, Lord of the Rings, and Hunt for the Ring. So far, so good. Franchise, Nyctophobia, Tobago. Dice Hospital, Drop It, I don't know if Drop It belongs in this shelf, but <laughs> next to Hong Kong Blackout, In the Hall of the Mountain King, and The Walls of York. Alrighty, isn't it amazing how just bringing everything out to the front automatically makes it look better? Let's see if there's any questions. This is the room you all want to walk around in? Yeah, no kidding. I know that when people come here, they're just going to walk around and look at the games. And I get it, right? This is exciting. It's fun for me, and I have already seen them all before. What is that room actually intended to be, if not game shelf storage? Oh, this is a uh, this is probably a living room. In Florida, a lot of a lot of the living rooms are the first room when you walk in the house. That's just the way it is in Florida a lot of times. Um, why is Discover Lands Unknown in your collection? That's a good question. I don't see where it is though. Uh, is it on shelf one? Well, anyway, uh, I, I put games in my collection I think people might be interested in playing. Discover Lands Unknown is likely going to be removed from the Dice Tower collection because no one ever plays it. All right, well, here we go. We got Bolt, Brass. One of the few games I'm going to have two copies of, Brass Birmingham. Brass Lancashire, we had two copies of that, then we found that nobody was playing it. Um, Expansity, two copies of Everdell. This is definitely one that needs two copies. Oh, here's Discovered Lands Unknown. Well, you know what? You're right, actually. So this is a game that was a... Every game of this is unique. The problem is this game is not good. And I don't think it's been checked out at all. So this one, also out of the library. See what you've done. All right, then we have Spike. It's an underrated game. Abyss. Reichhold. That's an Uwe Rosenberg game. And I actually have all my Uwe Rosenberg games on another shelf. But um, I'm going to keep this one here because it's a square box. We have two copies of Bunny Kingdom. Now, Bunny Kingdom's not like an amazing game. Well, no, it is an amazing game. Let me rephrase it. But it's not a game I think necessarily needs two copies, except one of these copies has the expansion built into it. And not everyone wants to do that. Alrighty, let's go to the bottom here. Now we're in uh, some 
some spots here that I really like. Um, uh, so first we have Ryan Lockett, of course. We got City of Iron above and below, Islebound, Near and Far, and The Ancient World, and Empires of the Void. Now, I bet some of you are asking, where's Sleeping Gods? And that's what I was just wondering. Sleeping Gods must be on a new shelf somewhere. So we're going to have to put that there when we get to it. We're going to move it to this shelf. Then we have Air. Then we have the one of, I think we had two games in the library that had three copies, and Wingspan is one of them. All three of these Wingspans are super deluxe versions. We got Walled City, Samurai, and Santa Monica. It looks like there's space on the shelf for another game anyway, so we'll probably be able to put Sleeping Gods in here. Then at the very bottom here, we have Tigers and Euphrates, Alien Frontiers, Whistle Mountain, and Whistle Stop, Black Orchestra. Then we get to the Days of Wonder area. So we have Shadows Over Camelot, Small World, Small World of Warcraft, Quadropolis, Coliseum, Mystery of the Abbey, Pirate's Cove, Deep Blue, and The River. And I know for sure we have five tribes. Hang on. Five tribes. I pulled five tribes out of the library because we were going to try to upgrade parts of it, and it didn't work out superbly well. I just got to figure out where five tribes is. Oh, there it is. So don't worry. I know y'all love five tribes. And I actually just found Sleeping Gods, too. Let me see if I can fit Sleeping Gods on the shelf here. Uh, where is it? Oof, that's a big box, though. So we'll see. I'll move all these over. It's going to be a tight fit. So what we're going to do for now is we're going to move Santa Monica up a shelf. Move these over. Put Sleeping Gods right there next to the other Ryan Lockett games. All right. So that's a that's an easy first run pass at um, a shelf. That's 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 my first run at a shelf, and that one was an easy one to do because this is shelf one. It's the first one I did in the collection, and so you can see how today's going to go. We got to do that um, twenty five. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah, we painted the walls this color. And I don't care. I don't feel bad at all if you don't like these colors because, well, I just don't care. Um, the Dice Tower, we voted on them, and most people like the colors. Maybe they look a little weird to you uh, seeing them on camera here. But I think when you see them in the studios, they're going to match our backgrounds and everything. And I think they'll look nice. So, meh. Does storing the games vertically scatter the components inside? Um, a little bit, but... Um, oh! <laughs> um, so, no, we put contain components in, and we're getting those new box, these the big bands that, were, that we had in our Kickstarter, and those will hold the games together. Um... Can Mike do the vacuuming instead of the robot vacuum? Yes. Um, he, he could. Let's go. Live, huh? Oh, yeah, we're live. Oh, yeah, people, I, I saw that one's a hot one, game on Board Game Geek, Mercado Lisboa. I mean, hot that people are interested in it. Yeah. We will have thoughts on that. Um, I wonder how many game pieces that Roomba's eaten? Hardly any. Uh... Yeah, how do you know a house in the warm part of the world? Tile living room for. You're right. It's Ticket to Ride, not Days of Wonder. You're right, but Ticket to Ride is on its own shelf because Ticket to Ride is a welcoming game, and I put all the welcoming games on the same shelf. Will there be crowd surfing and board game breakfast this week? There will be crowd surfing. That's the only video we're putting up this week, besides the stuff that's already scheduled, a few small things. All right. Do you have space to grow the library? A little bit. Anyway, okay, so I caught up in questions. 
Let's get to shelf two. Good morning, Roy. Should have brought my lawnmower. Yeah, no kidding. Um, <laughs> I mean, hey, I'll go back. I'll go back home, man. Grab it. I'm gonna wait till Kenny wakes up and yell about it. But is it worse? Is this dude just slacking on us? I don't know. Remember, I'm live. All right, so we're at shelf two now. So um, I'm going to just kind of slide him into this position. This seems like a pretty decent place to work, and that way I don't have to move the camera. So Kamisama and Netatanka. Then we got Dugong, Archmage. Not a lot of hot games here, frankly, but yes. And Sierra West. Then we got the Mask Trilogy, Tikal, Mexica, and Cusco. I'm very happy about these. Like when you come and game at one of our events, these are ones you should check out. Classic games, fantastic games. Uh, Mississippi Queen, another classic game. You'll notice these are all Super Meeple reprints, by the way. Here's their Colors of Paris. Uh, Pipeline from Capstone. Well, I hate that their logo's upside down there. Eh, it's better this way. All right. Then we got Champions of Midgard, or this Reavers of Midgard, and then two copies of Champions of Midgard. Now, do we need two copies of Champions of Midgard? We do not. But uh, I love the game, so I get to make some calls here. Neon, this is a city building game. Forum Trajanum. New York 1901. Dead Men's Cabal. Royals. Luxor. Really, at this point, there's no um, rhyme or reason to the games we're putting on the shelves other than the size of the box. Divinity Derby, Mission Red Planet, Aquatica, and Smartphone. You'll see there are some Dice Tower Essentials here together, though. There's Royals, Aquatica, Smartphone. Tiny Towns. Inuit, this is another one that you should check out if you come to the Dice Tower thing. Living Planet. Interesting. I never played this one. This one was one that Z played. And Steam Park. And again, you'll notice that there's probably a spot here for another game, but I probably pulled the game off and stuck it somewhere. So I'm leaving these spots open for now. Down here we have City of Gears. We have Viral. I'm actually going to switch Viral with uh, Divinity Derby here because I want to put the Dice Tower Essentials together. So, let's move Royals, Infinity Derby, Mission Red Planet, Royals, Viral, Aquatica Smartphone. A quadro of good games, a quartet. All right. Yeah, let's see. Uh, um, are you happy with the progress? Any speed bumps? No, not really. I mean, what are speed bumps? Um, the guy for lawn care hasn't shown up yet, as you heard Roy say when he came in. I don't know why. Um, but no, we're actually pretty happy with where things are. We've hit some speed bumps with the studios and like, oh, we need to find this. We had a hard time. We went to Ikea and there was a lot of things we couldn't get at Ikea because they weren't in stock. But the fact is, is we, I built an extra time so that we're able to figure these things out. Um... Um, am I not coming to UK Games Expo this year if it's on? I'm not. My apologies. And uh, are we really here just watching Mr. Tom put things on shelves? Hey, man, I warned you in the description. All right, so Council of Four, that's a game I want it in the Dice Tower Library. I mean, in the Dice Tower Essentials. Way of the Panda from Come On is another game that a lot of people have stopped playing. I'm in Ray. I'm in almost, oh, let's see, Australia, Poseidon's Kingdom, The Boldest, Through the Desert, uh, Pillars of the Earth, Mountain of Madness. Mountain of Madness is one of those games I think that if push comes to shove, this one's going to go out of the library. Space Gate Odyssey, Scorpius, and Around the World in 80 Days. Huh. Those are awesome. There's some pretty good games here. There's also a lot of games here I haven't played in the longest time. 
na, 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 for the longest time. All righty, let's go down to the bottom two shelves here. I probably should have brought knee pads to work today. All the rugged work we do around here. Yeah, well, I don't... Man, I'm not getting this carpeted. That, no, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, no. No, no, no. Please don't. <laughs> it would be such a pain to take the things in and out. Anyway, Roar Prehistory. Prehistory probably shouldn't be in here. Yeah, we'll keep it in for now. Via Nebula, Colony, Formula E, and Formula D. I put those next to each other because I'm weird. And I think that's hilarious. Yeah. Formula E is the one that almost no one here has played, right? Right. I know. <laughs> I think Z is the only person. Uh, Viniculture. He's, he's on the ketchup loser. Why is Viniculture on this shelf? Oh, I know why. Because this is we're now in Stegmeier section. Oh, that means Merchants of Venus is probably going to have to move off so we can fit on the amazing Red Rising. Um, wow. What? What are you talking about? I'm going to put Red Rising on this shelf. There was no sarcasm with this? Well, I'm not saying there was no sarcasm, <laughs> but I'm going to put it on the shelf. It was yeah. a true statement, mostly. Okay, fair. 10 out of 10. 10? Wow. No. You're, you're spoiling the review. You have a review. Between two castles of Mad King Ludwig. You'll notice that between two cities is in here, but whatever. Charter Stone. This is my custom version of Charter Stone. And two copies of Tapestry, although I suspect in a so year... I need to put between two cities between Paris and... That's tempting. <laughs> oh, so you should put between two cities, between two copies, and between two castles. Between two copies, and between two copies. And between two copies. You know what? I know Red Rising is going to go on the shelf, so I'm going to take Merchants of Venus off. And put it in the trash. <laughs> Eric's not watching. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah. So I don't know where I'm going to put Merchants of Venus. We're going to put that aside. I'm not getting rid of it, even though I'm not a huge fan of the game. But... All right, so then at the bottom we have Dragon Castle, Cooper Island. Talk about a buzz game that kind of went out of people's lives on that. Rise of Augustus, Vikings Gone Wild, Dawn of the Peacemakers, which Mike likes, but it's really a terrible game. Showing you his taste. Oh, he can't hear me. All right, Spirit Island. Whew. You know people want to play that one. Tribes. Stockpile. Now, if I was a jerk, I would have put Tribes next to Five Tribes. Favor of the Pharaoh. That's a different game in Flavor of the Pharaoh. Um, Zuloretto. It's a classic. Robin Hood and his Merry Men. Caravan. Asking for Troubles. And Zen Garden. Which, if you listen to the Dice Tower podcast, which just went up today, was on my top 10 Z games. Uh, because it starts with the letter Z. But it's in my library, too. Alrighty. Well, looks like Shelf 2 is back in play. So we're going to put shelf two here, back in its spot. Ah, I got to say, folks, once the games are faced, Essentially, it looks so much better. <laughs> it really does. Oh, I just, I'm so much happier with the shelves when the games look nice on them. Ah, I was bringing shelves for it. Oh, I see.
All right, so here we go, folks. Um, I guess you can't see the whole thing. I'll slide it in some more. There we go. Okay, so shelf three. Whew, let's look at some questions here. I didn't say I didn't like Red Rising. I just I said it was an amazing game. Uh, we'll review that next week. We'll do a four square review of it. So you'll get four likely different opinions on the game. Um, the regular schedule for the Dice Tower is going to be going up on Monday. I mean, straight up, we are going back to normal. I was, I've been waiting for, you know, to get things done. Um, no, it's regular schedule next week. You can hear other Dice Tower personnel in the background. Yeah, because they're working. They're getting for things ready. You'll be hearing machinery at some point because they're building this one studio. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Is this an auction? No. <laughs> all right, here we go. Forbidden Sky. Now, someone said, why is it all alone? Because it's a different size box than the others. And honestly, Forbidden Sky is not long for the world when it comes to the Dice Tower Library. It's just not. Anyway, Merlin. Oh, Merlin's gonna come out of the library because we got the new big box Merlin. I know the big box Merlin's gonna go in the library. So I'm gonna pull this now. That's not because it's a bad game. I like Merlin a lot, but we have the big box version. Or I should pull Forbidden Sky. It's not a good game. But it, the other two are in the uh, welcoming games shelf that I mentioned earlier with Ticket to Ride on it. And I don't want new people playing Forbidden Skies. All right. Elysium. Victoria Masterminds. Airlines. Europe. Dark Domains. Coimbra. And Alma Mater. And we got Manhattan. Runestones. I wonder if I should put all the Queen games together. I think they would look nice next to each other. I should consider that. I could put all the ones on these shelves together at least. Well, just anyway, I'll worry about that later. It's a Wonderful World on the Underground, Flatline, City Skylines, and Dinner in Paris. Now, shelf two, we're going to do a, another culling here because we have two copies of Copenhagen. And while I like Copenhagen a lot, I don't think enough people play it that we want to have two copies of it. So. We're just going to keep the deluxe edition because the deluxe edition is that much nicer. Alrighty. Then Barony, America, Kitchen Rush, and Rush MD, Carousel, and then the Alchemists, which I feel like should go on the bottom shelf down here because below it we have Dungeon Lords and Dungeon Cats, and I should put the CG games together. Alright, anyway, we got Paris, New Eden. Flotilla, Age of Dirt, which is actually a pretty good game, folks. Um, Coralia, Broadhorns, Minara, and Great Western Trail. Although that one's going to be reprinted, so when that's reprinted, that one's going to be off. All right, then we have Flamme Rouge. We're going to move down so you can see the bottom shelves. Ah, I see. There you go. That's probably better. Anyway, having a nail. Ghost Stories. This says Black Secrets, but the base game's inside here. Outlive, Offshore, A War Whispers. Outlive is great. Offshore is good. Barion. Starship Samurai, which is fully painted, by the way. Holly did a good job. Then we get the CG section here, which is a brief section. Yeah, I, I, I have more CG games. I might move them all to the same shelf. We'll see. Alchemist, Dungeon Lords, Dungeon Pets. Then we have the Sub, Subdivision, Suburbia. Suburbia will be replaced with the new Suburbia number two. And I have Deluxe Suburbia, so we'll have to wait and see. And then Castle of Mad King Ludwig and the Palace of Mad King Ludwig, which did not really take off that much. Jumping down here, we have the Deluxified Downfall, which is 
I hate this game, but I figured some people might get Bastille. This is a pretty good one. My Village, Mice and Mystics, Dream Home, Transatlantic, Ethnos, Pandorium, Yukon Airways, Mega Land, Tales of Glory. These games shouldn't be on this shelf because they're different size square boxes. That really bothered me. So I'm going to take these off. We're going to move them somewhere else. Hey, Merchant of Venus, welcome back. <laughs> All right, Taverns of Teeth and Thaw, Spirits of the Rice Patty. Yeah, Welkin shouldn't be on these shelves either. I'm going to move that to a different shelf. And then we have Mombasa. I'm actually going to move Mombasa and put it up next to Great Western Trail because that makes sense. All righty, let's look at the bottom here. We have Alabari, Quirky Circuits, the Castello Mathoni, Captains of the Gulf, Carnival of Monsters, CO2, Narcos, the board game, Peak Oil, King's Forge, Wayward, Shadow Rift, Tokaido, Valley of Kings, Kingsburg, and Manila. All right, so I took a couple games off, but later on we'll add some more. So for now, shelf three is done. Um... What do I do with the cold games? Well, we do various things with them. Um, the biggest thing is we, we normally sell them off at a Dice Tower convention, so Dice Tower East next year, but we're wondering if we need to get rid of some games before then because we literally have 2,000 games to get rid of. Um, but the best of the games, some of these are going to be heading over to Dice Tower West. The Dice Tower East and Dice Tower West libraries are now going to be split. For It's just too logistically difficult to ship them all over the place. Um, are all expansions for games in the core box? Not necessarily, and in fact, as time goes by, I'm putting fewer expansions in these boxes. And the reason for that is it's too confusing for people when they open a box and it's full of just everything. Um, let's see here. Kudos to whoever oriented all the vertical name games to the same side. That would be my daughters did that in the past. Melody, I think, did it for a while. You know, I don't think it's an OCD thing about wanting boxes to be the same size. Um, first of all, I try not to I try to be careful not to use OCD lightly these days. Um, but it's more that I just like things to look neat. They fit together better. And if you know a box is a certain size, then you know what shelf it's on, sort of. Uh, the expansions are, some of them are in the games, I have a whole expansion shelf. It's going to be the last shelf that I work on. Um, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's going to, I know that that's still someone that I ran into it in Seasons, and I know Seasons, for example, wherever it was on shelf two, I guess, still has the expansions in. As time goes by, you have to remember this started as my personal collection when I first started it, so I just kept all the expansions in the base box. Nowadays, very rarely is an expansion going to make it in because most people don't go to cons to play expansions. They go to cons just to play the base game. Anyway, let's get shelf four out here. Shed. 
All right, shelf four. Shelf four and shot, yep. Okay, this is the last of my square box shelves. And the reason why this happened is when I originally put the library together, this was the first box I grabbed when I started putting things on shelves. And so there technically should probably be like six of these shelves at this point, but whatever. Uh, let's see. What are the numbers on the boxes? Ah, I'm glad you asked. So there's little numbers on each box. That's to let you know what shelf it's on. I colored the numbers so that all, I mean, there's five different colors, but also you instantly know if you're putting something on the wrong shelf or not. Each shelf's gonna have big numbers. If you've been to one of our conventions, you've already seen it, but there'll be a big number four here and here. So you instantly know what shelf to put things back on. Not only that, but we take a full colored picture of each shelf at a con so you can see which games go where. Although this picture is currently vastly out of date, but I'm not gonna take the new pictures until right before a con. We'll come in and take brand new pictures and things. Anyway, here we go. Pursuit of Happiness, Selenia, US Telegraph, Photosynthesis, Imhotep, A Study in Emerald, River Dragons, Trains, Ashes. This one is coming out. And for no other reason, then we literally have the second edition of Ashes here. So we're just replacing one with the other. So I'm pulling it now because I know that that's the case. Crystal Clans, Rise of Ball, Amphor, Arctic Scavengers, Captain Sonar, and Conspiracy. All right. Abomination, Woodland, Seven Wonders. We have two copies of Seven Wonders. Some of you might say that Seven Wonders belongs on our welcoming game shelf. But I consider Seven Wonders to be a little more complex than that. Also, who cares? Robinson Crusoe. Now, this one, we have two copies of Robinson Crusoe. We have the Mystery Tales. This is all the expansion stuff. This is the expansion stuff, right? I don't think this should be here. This is just expansion stuff. It is. So that's actually going to go to my expansion shelf. That shouldn't be on this one. So I'm going to move that over here. All right. Robinson Crusoe, Automania, Domain, Great Game, Magnesia, Roll for the Galaxy, is another one that has the expansions in, and I wish it didn't. Yeah, what? Village. Was it my village on the other show? I'm going to be right back. I'm going to put this next to my village. It makes sense. Uh, where was my village? Oh, there it is. All right, so Village and My Village are now together because that makes sense. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this because I'm putting games together. And Mice and Mystics showed up here. Panic on Wall Street, Exoplans, and Estoril Super, Super Box. All right. And yes, I know that there's still holes, but like I said, we're leaving those holes open. When we get the shelves 24 and 25, I'm going to find boxes and go, that goes in a hole. But I'm also going to check. Oh, <laughs> here is the new Ashes. It's right here in front of me. You guys can't see, but on the shelf right here are brand new games that we need to play yet. And me and Roy want to play Ashes. Let's see if it fits. Just make sure. Yep. How? How nice. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. So Lost Valleys, Mega City Oceana, Marin Ocean, Star Trek Catan, now, you might say, why didn't you put that with Catan? But I don't know. Clank in Space, Clank in Space. One of those needs to come off the shelf. We don't need two Clanks in Space. All right, but we do have Clank. Atlantis Rising. Last Aurora. Huh. We have two copies of this one? Huh. Well, maybe not. Well, one of the benefits of doing all this in the same go like this. Godspeed. Rise of Tribes. 
Path of Light and Shadow. Jin and Mariposas. Mariposas is actually not going to go here. Uh, Mariposas goes somewhere else. So I'm going to pull Mariposas off the shelf because it's going to go somewhere else. Not because it's a bad game. Cosmic Encounter. We actually have two Cosmic Encounters. Let me go get the other one. Uh, that should be around here somewhere because we recently played Cosmic Encounter. That's why it's off the shelf. Yep, here it is. Cosmic Encounters. And you know what, actually, since we're on this subject and I'm thinking about it, Cosmic Encounters is here. I'm going to move Conspiracy down to here. And I'm going to put Crystal Clans. We're going to leave room here for... We're going to leave room for Ashes. But we're going to put... Because I just saw it on the shelf. Yeah. The new Summoner Wars is going to go right there. Alrighty. So let's continue down here. Um... Moving down, I just realized I wasn't showing you guys the down area. So we got Cosmic Encounter, Alexandria, Foodies. Foodies is another one where the box size is not quite where it should be. So I'm going to pull that one off. Uh, I'm just going to stick a box in its place for now. We're going to stick over box in this spot. And now we get to the T games. Oh, Overboss is too big for this spot. All right. I'll go figure. I didn't realize Overboss was an oversized game. Eh, go figure. Uh, I think we'll put... We'll put Exodus Proxima Centauri there. All right, Dice Settlers. Now we get the NSKN. And we can see we have two copies of Zulkin and two copies of this one. Trish Majestus Tech Henhu. So this is the T section. Then we got three copies of Quacks of Quedlingburg. And honestly, I'm going to keep three copies. I think it's the other game I have three copies of. I have three of Wingspan and three copies of Quacks. And the day I stop seeing those copies fly off the shelf, we'll stop keeping that many. Ishtar, y'all, and Yangtze Bitter up. Two copies of Maracaibo. Well, for one thing, Maracaibo should be next. Maracaibo should be next to Great Western Trail. And, man. Yeah, that's over here. One of these is better than the others. I'm gonna have to compare them later. But you're right. I'm gonna be putting. I'm gonna put Maracaibo next to Mombasa and Great Western Trail. Cause that just makes sense. Alrighty, then we have Dale Merchants, Monster Lands, K2. XCOM, no one plays this one anymore, do don't they? Uh, Istanbul Big Box, X Libres, Lewis and Clark, The Big Score, and Heroes of Dominaria. All right, well, that's it for shelf four for now. Let's come back here, see if I got any questions. Um... Let's see. For weight of games, I don't know. I don't know the heaviest game in the library. It would be one. It's probably Small World Deluxe or something like that. Is Kemet Blood and Sand going to get a review or a comparison from Dice Tower? Yes.
We'll get to it. I promise. <laughs> um. Village and my village next to each other would be perhaps confusing for newcomers. Uh, newcomers aren't grabbing village or my village. <laughs> How many people learn and play games in the same city when they attend an event? A lot of people do that, for sure. I estimated total value of the library? I don't know, but I think Kenny figured it out at some point. Um, don't worry, we're going to have all this stuff insured. Um, no, we're not going to auction off the games for the Jack Vassal Memorial Fund. Um, we do different things for the Jack Vassal Memorial Fund, but uh, we try to you know, keep the dice hour running too. Nobody plays XCOM, maybe call it. Maybe, but until I need to. Um, do I have the expansion of Quacks? Yes, one of those boxes has the expansions in it. Maybe two of them. Does the Roomba do a good job? No, the Roomba's terrible. I bought it because it was cool. Bought it like, I don't know, three, four years ago. It's never done a good job. But it might do a good job in this room. This might be the room for the Roomba. I haven't run it yet. Alrighty. Here we go. Let's move shelf four. And now we're going to see some weird stuff. Because we're moving out of the square box zone into a mare trash. Da -da 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 -da. With shelf five. Bum, 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 bum. Shelf five, straight up a Ameritrash. That's where we're at at this point. So we have Project Elite, Project Elite. Now these are the old Project Elites. We have the new ones. I should just replace those now. I mean, again, that's one of the whole points of me doing this. Delete. Project delete. All right. Alter quest. Right questers. Chaos in the old world. The Daimyo box and rising sun. And then another rising sun. Now, just as a... Excuse me. Just as a note. Sometimes I put... Sometimes I put expansion, and we're moving dust around uh, on the same shelves. In Ameritrash, I'll do that. Like, the Daimyo box goes next to Rising Sun, because this is the kind of game that people will pull the expansions out for. Then we got two copies of Blood Rage. Popular game. Then we got Scythe. Now, we have three copies of Scythe, and I don't think we need three copies of Scythe. It's kind of a crappy game anyway. It's not. I'm trying to draw, trying to draw Mike Delisio out here. Um, this one's missing a red mech. Oh, that makes that easy enough. Yeah, two copies of side is enough. Then we got Civilization, Skull Tales, the others. Oh, the others won't fit in there, so I'll put it here. And actually, I just moved it. Well, I don't know, actually. There might be another game that goes here. So we'll see. 
All right, let's go to the bottom games here. Oof. All right, so here we have all the D&D &D games. At some point, I may cut some of them. Assault of the Giants is actually slightly different, but we look how much space these take up. But they're fun games. I, I think people should give them a whirl. Then we have Xeno Shift. What is this? Massive Darkness and The Godfather. Like I said, this is so trashy. All right, then we got Mystic Veil. That's actually not a Mara trash, but whatever. Uh, it's a big box. Cthulhu Wars and Fire and Axe. And then Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Another game no one really liked. What? Okay, see, that time I got a reaction. All right, Thunderstone Quest. Then we have Zombie Side. Zombie Side. Zombie side. Zombie side. I feel like there's a missing zombie side here. Let me see if I can find one. Although at some point I'm going to be cutting zombie sides. Yeah, here we go. Night of the Living Dead. I'm moving that to this show. Then we got Munchkin, Mansions of Madness, and Lord of the Rings. See, that shelf was much easier to do. Shelf five. Alrighty. Have I? Have you actually played every single game here? There's more games than all my local games com stories combined. No, I haven't played all of them, but I have played. I'll say I played most of them for sure. Um. Why, why the studio move and it's a lot bigger? We moved because they sold the house that we were renting. So we bought this one. So this time I'm the landlord and I'm treat myself okay. No, the landlord was great though at the old place. We love them. Nice people. But they, they're retiring and they want to sell the house. And we did not want to buy one that small. We wanted to be able to have the library in the studio. This has been a dream of ours for a while now. Uh, we actually have a regular vacuum cleaner, folks. This is, I bought it because I got sick of the Roomba. The room is just in this room for some reason because this is the best spot we found for it for now. Did you guys have the guy come and spray Bonacore repellent? Uh, no, all you have to do for that is just a, a little bit of axe. Um, is there a Dewey Decimal System for board games? There's not, but I think there should be. Um... I'm not a huge shy fan, but I think you do need three copies for cons. No, I don't think so. I don't know that I've ever seen all three copies in play at the same time. Uh, what percentage of the games in the library have I played? 80% at least, maybe 90. I mean, like for example, the shelf right here. I have played every game. I haven't played Skull Tales. And that's it. I've played every other game on this shelf. So one game out of, like, I don't know, 30. But that's this shelf. You know, so other shelves are going to be different. <laughs> you guys don't have to live in the studio, by the way. <laughs> Um, people complaining about the paint on my walls. I'm going to come to your house and complain about the paint on your walls. My favorite from this shelf? Oh, Project Delete. Come on, man. I love Project Delete. All right, let's get this shelf out of here and get shelf six in the play. Boom, boom, boom. right 
This one shouts six all the time. Now here's the thing, folks, about the Dice Tower Library. It's not the biggest library in the world. There are bigger libraries. I think the Gen Con Library is bigger. Um, BGG definitely is a bigger library than ours. Some of you watching have a bigger personal library than this. But this is where I'm excited, folks. I'm excited because the stuff in our library is enhanced. When we have games in a library, we, I upgrade the dice if I can. Um, if there are specific meeples, you know, that you can buy to put in. We're slowly painting the library. Lots of these games have been fully painted. Not Batman, don't get excited. But a lot of these games have been painted. And because of that, it's so exciting. They will be able to come in. Tell me we're not live. <laughs> I, oh, I even knew you were coming. Sorry. You heard me approach. No, no, no. I knew you were coming. That's all. I was busy talking about. The games in the collection. Are you okay? I'm okay. Do you need a hug? No, I don't need a hug. This is a little too high up. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to keep it at my level. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, I forgot what I was talking about. I was talking about, oh, the library. Okay, so we have two copies of Memoir 44. I'm going to actually be moving the Memoir 44 Expansion over here to the expansion section. All right. Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is here. Now, you might be wondering where Gloomhaven is. It's one of the few games that's not in the library um, because it just doesn't fit very well. All righty. So we have Inish, Kemet. I'm actually going to be getting rid of one of these Kemets. Uh, expansion included. Expansion available. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this one for now because I have the new one, and the new one's definitely going in the library. Unless you hate it. Unless I hate it, yeah. Um, now we got Batman and Batman, and then we got an old copy of Heroes Quest. Uh, I will be getting the new one in the library at some point. Then we have Madara. And Hoplomachus, Hoplomachus, Hellboy, and Axis and Allies Zombies. Then moving down, Cloudspire, Star Wars Rebellion, Game of Thrones, New York Slice does not belong in this show. I think it's there because it's a thin box. But it's got to go somewhere else. It doesn't make any sense to have it on this shelf. Big Trouble Little China. Lords of Hellas. Along with its extra stuff. Brook City. Street Fighter. And Barnacle Bay. So talk about there being a lot of stuff here. Oh, you guys actually can't see all the ones I just did. All right. Then we get down here. We have the Marvel... So I have these and things here. I got Marvel Collection. One and, uh, this is Marvel. Um, Legendary. Uh, Dune is just sitting here for some reason. Two copies of Vindication. That's probably not needed, but Vindication is a great game, so you can't talk about it. Keyforge. We have a whole bunch of Keyforge decks. You can try it if you come to the library. Here's Tainted Grail, which I actually need to pull this out of the library because I want to go play it. Starcadia Quest, Cthulhu Death May Die, and Run Fight or Die. Just, so hard. All right, going all the way to the bottom. Ugh. Ultimate Warriors is a kind of a competitor to King of Tokyo. If you've never played it, it's one to give a world to. Forbidden Stars, Star Wars Outer Rim. I still have two copies of this. We may go down to one at some point. We need washers. Arkham Horror and Eldritch Horror. 
Twilight Imperium, Rex, Spectre Ops. We just have one of the Spectre Ops. I don't know. I don't think you need both in the library. Fury of Dracula, Battlestar Galactica. This was donated to us, by the way. Very much appreciate that. What is this one? Oh, Galactic Warlords. The Witcher and Detective. All right. So that's shelf six. Shelf two of our Ameritrash Central. All right, let's see what people are saying. All righty. What is the library? I'm glad you asked. Uh, the library is used in four different events. Uh, well, three. Um, Dice Tower East, which will happen in July 2022. Dice Tower Retreat. We have two of those this year. One in September and one in November. And the Dice Tower Cruise. By the way, folks, Dice Tower Cruise is live now. You can go to DiceTowerCruise.com. You can sign up for Dice Tower Cruise. It's now open to the general public. Rooms are selling. I've never seen something sell so fast. I'm not saying that as a sales pitch. Come or don't come. I'm not going to try to push it on you, but it's going to be fantastic. And we bring these games. We bring this whole library for you to play at all those events. Also, we get to play these too, you know. It's for research purposes. Um... Let's see here. People can't just walk in there to play. Well, <laughs> folks in our game group can. If you're in Miami and you want a game, just email me at tom at dicetower.com. Uh, this is also your library then to some degree. Um, do you have your own collection at my house? Not really. I have a few games at my house that I'm playing at any given point. Like I just mentioned, Tainted Grails at my house. I need to take the base game because I got the, the the expansions in. And I got a, a bunch of games with my kids. You can see that occasionally I do a video at my house. Uh, and you can see a bunch of kids' games in the background. And um, uh, there might be a few other small games in my house. But for mostly, this is my collection. Oh, I say if you come to the library. So I meant if you come to one of our events where you have the library. In my experience at conventions, when I get to the games library, most of the games I want to play are taken out by the time I arrive. Surely the sheer size of the Dice Tower avoids this. It's not so much the size of the Dice Tower library, it's the quality of the Dice Tower library. The one thing I don't want you to do is go to it and go, this is all garbage. Because these are not garbage games. You may not like these. In fact, I don't like all these games. But I don't think they're garbage games. And so that's our goal. Also, if we think a game is going to be played a lot, we stick it on a hot games table so that you can't check it out. And I also have rules that people can't take games out of the gaming areas. I don't want people to hog games at game conventions. Gaming should be fun. All right. How's logistics of getting the library and the cruise? It's horrifying. But anyway. At six, moving to seven. Sorting. You're alive. I am. I'm up to shelf seven. Shelf seven? That's my favorite shelf. That's a big fat lot. That's actually, this is like your least favorite shelf. What do you mean? Between Lacerda. Love it. <laughs> and, um. If we weren't live, I would have no Do you need help moving this? No, I'm going. I'm just taking it in front of you. Oh, you put it in front. Rather than move the camera, it's easier to slide the camera. I'm just I'm running a pass through the shelves and getting rid of games. Ooh, how exciting. Well, I just got rid of my Empire of the North. What? Well, we didn't. Need, we don't need two copies anymore. Oh, are these all the ones you're pulling? No, these oh, I pulled okay. because of size. Got I didn't it. like where they were. These, these are, I pulled. These you're pulling. Mostly they're duplicate copies. Yeah, okay. And 
Project Elite I replaced with the new one. But there's no game I pulled yet because... Is there? Because you're sick of it. No, Discover Land's unknown. <laughs> no one's ever going to play that. It was time to pull that. You got that in there, huh? Well, when it came out, I thought maybe people want to see what it's like. Here's a way to, to, to try it without buying it. But now you can buy your own, very own copy for like $2 <laughs> somewhere. Not, not quite, but almost. Yes. It's very, very cheap. That and Seafall have dropped to about $10, I think. Between 10 and 14 People are only buying those games for the components at this point. Yeah, I guess. Or Curiosity, I think. Sure. Have fun. Alrighty. I'm missing a game from this shelf, and I'm going to blame Chris. Uh, on Mars. Where is it? It goes up here. On Mars is there, but is on Mars around here somewhere? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, it even had the 7 eye. Let's put the stuff right on top of on Mars. All right. Yeah, okay. This is Lacerda. Lacerda. Even though this is Ameritrash for some reason. Actually, it's not really Ameritrash anymore. These are more big box Euros than anything else. What are we talking about? This shelf. Trash. Oh. Although, the Valley of the Dead King, straight Ameritrash. There's 175 mechanisms on that shelf. <laughs> That's true. Uh, then we got the big boxes. We got Castle Panic big box. Although, they're, they're about to kickstart... The deluxe edition. By the way, happy Star Wars Day, everyone. I was thinking maybe we should play Queen's Gambit today. <laughs> Just, I think that's on the Catch of Palooza, isn't it? Or did we already play that one? We haven't played that one. It's, oh, it's not even here. It's at my house. Never mind. Actually getting painted. But... I, don't, I, don't, I don't care that strongly about it. Yeah, I can run back and get it. I, again, go back to that other point. All right. Mm -hmm. So, Black Angel, who was at the garbage truck? You just like watching those automatic arms. No, I just, it's good for me to know when the garbage truck gets here. <laughs> so, it's 9 o'clock. That's not a bad thing. All right, so we have Space Base, Command Station, and regular Space Base. Space Base just a fantastic game. So, then we got Escape Big Box, Kingdom Builder Big Box, Carcassonne Big Box, Shogun Big Box, Alhambra Big Box, El Grande Big Box. All righty. Well, that was pretty easy. Let's go down and look at the bottom here. So here we have Fireball Island, Robo Rally, and Glenmore. Turn Glenmore that way. Bootleggers, Ogre. Now I don't have the Mega Ogre in my library. I just don't know why I would want to, actually. Um, Detective, Escape Plan, and Nations. I'm not really happy with... The box layout here. Hang on, let me fix some stuff. I don't like this. Maybe Detective can go. Maybe Detective can go on top of Fireball Island. Or under it or something. Yeah, that's better. That makes more sense. Then we'll put Nations. An escape plan here. Glenn Moore on top of them. Robo Rally can go here on top of Detective. And then I got a spot for another game. Which shall be. Doom. Whew, that fit in beautifully. Alright. Then down here. Okay, this is getting a little, I have a Terraforming Mars upgrade kit here, but I just got in the giant Terraforming Mars box. I'm going to have to do something with that. Here's the expansions and two Terraforming Marses. This is a mess, honestly, so I'm going to fix it. Gatefall, Pirates and Dinosaurs, Chicago Express, Wasteland Express, and Coma Ward. <laughs> I don't know why those games have anything to do with each other. All right, all the way down to the bottom. Red Alert. Amerigo. This is where we'll probably put the uh, the uh, Merlin big box. We'll go here. Kung Fu Panda. Quad Heroes. Terror Below. Core Space. Tokyo Highway. The Huge Box of Suburbia. And Wacky Races. Wacky Races doesn't really belong on that shelf. 
but we're going to leave it there for now, I think. All right. Well, that wasn't too too bad, everybody. Shelf seven. We're like one-fourth through. Um, switch Alhambra with Wallenstein. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Good, good call. I think the width of the shelves has something to do with that, though, folks. I think Big Box and Wallenstein were slightly different sizes. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. If Tom isn't careful, these videos will take off like the marble races. Actually, the marble race, you should see the number of new marbles that are entering next week. Marble races are back on. Um, it's bothering me at the skate plan isn't with the other Lacerdas. Well, there's two reasons for that. One, I only have room for four here. And two, it's different than the other Lacerdas, I think considerably. I think if you like any of these four, you will like the other three. You know, these four are like definitive ones. Also CO2, but CO2 is a different size box. Um, be careful about putting too much weight on top of that cheap fireball on box. Yeah, it's fine. And Amerigo with Wallenstein and Shogun. Oh, that's interesting. Where did I have Amerigo? But I don't... That's a good idea. I like how you... I like the cut of your jive. But I think this might be too... No, no. I might want to raise this shelf up a tiny bit. All right, there we go. Feld. Wait, it's not Feld. Feld's only the top one. But Cube Towers. All right, I do like that one. Why aren't the games in a more alphabetical order? I get asked this a lot because I personally think alphabetical order is the worst way. Not the worst way. The worst way is just throwing games on the shelf. But you cannot make them look neat like this, and people don't look for games based on alphabetic order. If you come in and you're like, I want to play on Mars, and so I'll have a, we have a wonderful setup, we have notebooks, you look up on Mars, we'll say Shelf 7A. So it's on Shelf 7, and it's on A, A, B, C, D, E. It tells you exactly where it is. You'll come here, and on Mars is gone. And you'll go, oh, well, I like Kanban, I'll play that. That's the whole point of this, I think. And that's why in alphabetical, you can't fit them on the shelves. It's a real pain in the neck. Make room for the Castle Mad King Ludwig Collector's Edition. Yeah, I know. I don't know what I'm going to do with that one. I can't imagine these boxes going back in the same spots and conventions, but they do because the people who are volunteers at the library will simply pull off the sheet here. And again, this sheet is out of date, but it shows you exactly where the game goes. And I'll say, oh, um, this one goes here, and I'll stick it there. And that's that. That's that. Um, space base times two seems excessive. I found that space base gets played a lot at cons. Also, it's one of my favorite games, and I and I have a sometimes there's just a little bit of that in the things. Alrighty. What dictates a game being stored horizontally or vertically? Uh, size. These big boxes would be terrible to be put on the other side. All right. Let's put back shelf seven and let's get to shelf eight. We're done with Ameritrash for a while. Here comes the Euro crowd.
All right, Euro gamers, it's time for rejoicing. Here you go. We'll start with the colonists. Two copies of Stone Age. Not because I think Stone Age is super popular, but because I wanted the original and I have this 10th anniversary edition. And I may pull out this one after a while. Let's make a bus route. St. Malo, Las Vegas. And now we have... So this is kind of a weird, a weird shelving area here. Because... There was the numbered versions here for a while. You'll see the Castle Tuscany is three from a layout. Layout numbers their games. The problem is, a lot of their games are garbage. So I can't have them all, so you just have to get over that. We got some Feldian stuff here. I got two castles of uh, Burgundy, and they're not next to each other. There, I fixed that. So we got two Puerto Rico. Oh, Castles of Tuscany should probably be next to Castles of Burgundy. And we're going to have to do it like this so that y'all don't get sad because I want to put the three right after the two. There. Does that look better? I thought you might agree. Trajan, in here, the Dragon, Notre Dame, Bora Bora, Carpe Diem. So if you're tired, if you're having a hard time sleeping at my con, this is the shelf you come to. I jest. All right. Brewcrafters, Vinos, Manhattan Project, Energy Empire, Gold West. Hey, this is on the catch of Palooza. I haven't played this one yet. Pioneer Days. Porto Carthago, Infamy, Baron Park, Fine Sand, Carthago, Mogul, Cafe International, Heroes Welcome. That's not very Euroy, but who cares? Cacao and Anchors Away. Moving down. You, you know what's coming now? It's time for Rosenberg. Rosenberg. Hallertau, Orn Labora, Caverna, Agricola, Loyang. Feast for Odin along with the extra box expansion. Two Lahavs. Why is there two Lahavs? Because Lahav is the best of all these. Yeah, what's, what's happening in this Glass Road, and then it's Trilogy. One, two, three. Cottage Garden, Indian Summer, and Spring Meadow. Very pleased with the shelf, actually. And I know we have another Rosenberg sitting around here somewhere. That's not on that shelf. I don't know that I care. Or the um, Summer Pavilion ones, or whatever. Yeah, but if, that, if that's the thing, then those are the ones that are going to get moved. All right, moving down here. Oh. Carson City. Um, here's Las Vegas Royale, which actually is number one in that little one, two, three up there, but it doesn't really match the other game. Uh, New Dale. And now we have Richard Brees. Key Flower, Key Flow, Key Fur, Key Market, and Key to the City. Do you have Keeper? Did you just say Keeper? Keeper. Yeah, Keeper. Yeah, there's a, uh, an expansion for that. Either out. Uh, uh, no, it's on Kickstarter. It's on Kickstarter, yeah. Keep lock, or keep her Swa, lock up, and uh, roll player. It's called Keep Her Soul. Keep Her to Yourself. <laughs> Do you uh, want to keep her? Yeah, you knew the answer. All right, Marco Polo, Marco Polo 2. Valapriso, Frenzy, Barrage. Patch History, Raccoon Tycoon, Last Will, First Clash, Jamaica, Palimala, Crown of America, and oh my, that's an old version of a choir down there. I really want to get the Hasbro version of a choir because I think it's a better one, but mm. there we go. Shelf 8 was easy. I didn't do much changing of Shelf 8 at all. all right. Let's see, what do we got here? Will you incorporate the shelves in marble races? No, that'd be pretty funny, though. Um, don't forget to update the database. Yes, we're going to redo the whole database. That's why I'm not really worried about. Usually, it used to be whenever I moved the game, I'd write it down immediately, and I'd go change the database. Here, we're going to redo the database from scratch. Um, how do you know which number shelf each one is? Well, right now, 8-8-8-8-8-8. So if I put a game on the shelf, it doesn't have an 8 on it. We don't. You need to have an 8 added to it. That's all. Um, is there a way to color code them along with box no, categories and box size? Would definitely be more appealing to look at. You know, there comes a point where I don't care anymore. I don't know that I necessarily want them all to be the same colors next to each other because then it's hard to find or it's harder to find games. Um, let me see here. Yeah, 
It's really cool. And during the apocalypse, I will use this road as my hideout. Forget weapons and food stockpiles. Yeah, but you can't eat meeples. If you have Old West and Presario, it should be next to Pioneer Days. I don't argue about that. In fact, Well, when we come across it, remind me. Shelf 8. And then I'll... Where is... Where did I have that, anyway? Pioneer Days. We'll take off Infamy. And we'll leave a spot here for Infamy. We'll move to another shelf. See, now I got a spot for it. So when it comes, we get to it, remind me. Shelf 8. New York Zoo is not in the Rosenberg shelf. You're right, but also the Rosenberg shelf is full. Surprised you don't have the role player big box. Is it out yet? I don't think it's out yet. Do you have legacy games in the library? We do not. I mean, not any kind of legacy. I mean, I have, uh, earlier I, I said I had um, the, the Stegmaier one, um, but that's because you can just play it as a base game afterwards. Uh, Tom, does putting all these board games please you, or is it a rather boring, tiring thing for you to do? I cannot emphasize how much I like doing this. Um, do you have the expansion to Barrage? I do, but I did not put it in the library. Too much stuff. And I think Barrage is enough. You have Las Vegas and Las Vegas Royale separated. Thank you. That's the sort of thing I need to do. Las Vegas should not even be on the shelves because we have Las Vegas where we're at. We don't need this little one. So that's out. Welcome back, New York Slice! Woo! See? That's what y'all do. You're helping. Was that four tile crack? Yeah, we, we need to fix one four tile here. We'll get to it. All right. It's time to go to shelf nine. When I'm done with this, this room's gonna feel so much better with all those games straightened out. All right, now we're at a kind of a messy shelf, so this shelf got pushed all the way to the back. Oh, wait. Yeah, it did. All right, so we'll just bring it forward. Not a problem. Is it in screen? Here we go. All right. We got Hawaii, La Grana, St. Petersburg, Yokohama, Kalis, and Kalis 1303. Then we got Medici. Awkward Guests, Sailing Toward Osiris. We have two copies of Lorenzo Magnifico, and that's because this one here in this box that's falling apart, which I gotta fix, is it has the expansion in it. Nagaraja, Chocolate Factory, Hentes, and Code 777. All right, I got Cytosis here. I think I want to put all his games together. So I'm going to pull so Cytosis off this shelf temporarily. I'm going to put the genius games together. So we got Rivals of Catan, Nations the Dice Game, Majolica, Magic Fold, and London. 
And now, folks, it's time for the uh, Garfield Games Parade. Vi Counts, Architects, Architects, Paladins, Paladins. Then I'm going to put, I'm going to change the order a little bit, Raiders of Scythia, First Light, Raiders of the North Sea, and then a, the big box version of Raiders of the North Sea. Homebrewers, I got another game coming in here from Garfield, so we'll leave this spot empty. The, the roll and write one. It's around here somewhere. I can't remember the name of it. Then down here, now this is a classic game, Russian Railroads. This is one that when you come to the library, you should hunt down games that you can't normally play. Russian Railroads is one of those games. Dominic Kickstart Ultimate Railroads. Probably. Yeah, they put out an announcement about it. Oh, they're so going to. They're going to. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's going to be like a big box. It's going to be all the different expansions and everything too. I am not thrilled about this. Big, everything being in a big no, box. I agree. It's, it's making the library like blah. All right, Belfort. Galaxy Trucker. Why is Galaxy Trucker here? Seems like a weird place to put it. Eh. Oh, that's right. People can't see these. Sorry. Woo! There you go. Cupcake Empire. That's a good underrated one. Which one? Cupcake Empire. I agree. Actually, Cupcake Empire is one of my, I call it convention games. Like, when I go to the convention, I'll say, hey, have you played Cupcake Empire? And I'll pull it out and play with somebody. Yeah, it's easy to teach. Fun dice craft. All right. Princess of Florence. That seems like a... Should have been back with those other ones. Princess of Florence feels like it should have gone next to Puerto Rico. But I would have to pull a game off from here. Yeah. And your Tyson bus route that I don't seem to fit. Can't fit it. Welcome to New York Slice and Bus Route. Here, I'm giving you this, Chris. Although I think these are fatter than that one. So let's make a bus route. It's going to probably have to go somewhere else. All right, Grand Austrian Hotel. The King's Guild. Feudality. Around the World 80 Days. And Furnace. Furnace is hot, folks. You need to try out Furnace. All right, moving down. Make fun of my jokes, Kempels, what did I say? Furnace is hot. Oh, man, I didn't even mean that as a joke. I really didn't. <laughs> Furnace. There's no way that, that people are going to think that was not a joke, but that was not. I, wow. All right. Here we have Food Chain Magnet. Expansion. Why is this here? This makes no sense. It should go with Food Chain Magnet. Do we already see that one? Why would I have Food Chain Magnet on this shelf? It shouldn't be there. Well, hey, let's make a bus route. You're back. I'm putting you next to bus. Yes! I love doing stuff like that. All right, Newton. Orleans, Orleans. Orleans is popular enough. We put two copies in. Altiplano. Uh, Indonesia, Kapow, Clans of Caledonia, there's Old West Impresario. I remember, you don't need to remind me. Show Old West Impresario. You're right, those look pretty next to each other. Which one? Old West Impresario and whatever the other one is, I don't remember now. All right. Here's Lifeboats, Exodus Fleet, Obsession, Kremlin, Freshwater Fly, and The Magnificent. And I can put another one on there. So we're going to put Infamy is back. All right, here at the bottom, Pirates, The Guilds of London, Terra Mystica, and Gaia Project next to each other, Fertility, Chinatown, East Bahan. Scoville, Taramara, Hadera. Hadera is great, by the way, folks. Monster Baby Rescue. Then we have Rec Raiders and Fossilus. What's the other game from Kitchen 
kids at the table board games. There's Fossilis, Rec Raiders. What's the third one? Why can't I not remember? Oh, you're looking it up online. Yeah, I'm looking it up. I don't know. <laughs> Meanwhile, we got Vast, Artemis Project, and Trials of the Temples. Are you talking about Creature Comforts? That's not coming on, right? Yeah, Creature Comforts is upcoming. If that happens, I'll just put it on the show. Mike, go away, go walk away. Uh, kids' Table Board Games, what are they known for? Kids' Table Board Games, known for Rec Raiders and Creature Comforts. Fossilus. Fossilus. Yeah, I already got those two. I thought there was a third game that looked like Rec Raiders and Fossilus, but maybe I'm wrong. Bugs on Rugs. Yeah, that's a kid's Haunt game. Haunt the House? I mean... Oh, Haunt the House. That's probably in the library here somewhere. If I find it, I'll come put it in the show. All right, let me get up. Oof. All right, let's do some questions here. Here we go. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. Where'd you get the game room sign? I got that game room sign at um, Shady Maple in Pennsylvania, Lancaster or Blue Ball, Pennsylvania. Um, and they had a gift shop there and I saw this and I instantly bought it. Um, anyhow. Yeah, you should reorganize your stuff, folks. It, it, makes you, it makes me feel good to reorganize it. The West Kingdom boxes are such an annoying size. Amen to that. I've been, I've been saying that for a long time. I've been listening to all. <laughs> Do not play wingspan and serve mini eggs as a snack. Who serves mini eggs as a snack? <laughs> so when are you inviting us over to play some games? Hey, if you live in Miami, like I said, email me. Um, nations, the dice game does not go in nations. They feel very different. So I'm, I'm not going to put them together. I do not. Someone said that uh, here. I like. I thought you liked when things were as big as possible. No, I don't think so. I like when things are, are smaller size. Frankly, I don't want tiny size. I like bigger boxes. I don't necessarily like tiny boxes, but this big giant box with everything in it. Ugh, I'm just getting tired of it. Um. Yes. Yes. Furnace is a hot game is what I meant, sorry. Food Fighters. Yeah, Food Fighters I think is in my kids section now, mostly. Vass is not with Root. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that, but um, one of the, I don't know, they're just not together. Guilds of London, but no Snowdonia. No Snowdonia is on the other shelf because of the largeness of its size. Do you have a copy of Explorers of the North Sea with Shem Games? No, I only put good games in the library. I know that's anathema, but I just don't I don't think Explorers is a very good game. I think it's okay at best. I know some people like it, but it, I don't think it's good enough to put in the library. I have to make cuts somewhere. And when I go to a convention, lots of people play Raiders. Lots of people play these. I've never seen anyone play Explorers of the North Sea at a convention. Have you already picked out which room will be the main studio? Yes, that they're actually working on that right now. Alrighty. It's time. Reason why all the Queen games are separate? I don't know. I don't know that they really need to go together. I might put them together at some point. We'll see. You know, organizing a collection like this to do things like that is a lot harder than people might think. Hey, Chris. Good don't. <laughs> don't forget you said you were going to do that. Thank you. 
All right, folks, I said I have a welcoming game shelf, and it's shelf number 10, easy to remember. So let's take a look and see what's on this shelf. So century, 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 century. That's a lot of century. Although some of these, I think two of the boxes here, so there's six of them, and then two boxes contain everything. So if you want to mix them, those are the boxes that you pull out. Then we got pandemic. Too much pandemic, frankly. I don't even think I have all the pandemic, so. I got what I got, rising tide, regular pandemic, fall of Rome, rapid response, Cthulhu and Iberia. I'm missing one of them and the cure. What am I missing? Rising tide, Iberia. Everyone has Iberia. <laughs> anyway, there's Catan. Not a lot of Catan stuff actually, but you'd be surprised how few people play these games at cons. Then we got the little tickets arrived here, Amsterdam, New York, London, and then the map collection. I'm very pleased with this. We have every map. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half, and seven. With six and a half, you might say, Poland. Then we have Marquin. This is very rare. Nordic countries. Rails and sales. That's the worst of all the Ticket to Rides, but we still have it. Three normal copies of Ticket to Ride and two copies of Europe, just in case multiple people want to play with the maps at the same time. We probably will cut one of those normal Ticket to Rides out, but here's the cool thing. All these Ticket to Rides have upgraded trains in them. I'm very excited about it. Here's Forbidden Desert and Forbidden Island, as people were asking about before. They're in tins, which is terrible, and I wish people... I think they've upgraded these to boxes, haven't they? I've not seen that. But, like, new, new printings of it? I thought they moved them. If they move these to boxes, we need to get boxes, because I hate tins with a passion. Oh, yeah. Forbidden Island is like a $10 game anyway. Flashpoint Fire Rescue, along with its expansion, I put them together because I think it's split between the two of these. But this is one of those things that I'm going to at some point come in and just put it down to the base game. Two copies of Sagrada, Reef, Azul, Azul, and Azul. Although we only, have, we only have one copy of Summer Pavilion. But I don't know. I don't know that we even need two copies of Stained Glass. Because most people still like playing the base game the most. Carcass on the City, Carcass on Safari, Carcass on Star Wars. My Carcassonne collection is quite small. I have very few of the Carcassonne around the world. Um... Because Sam took them all with him. All right. Oh, we can do that? <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> hey, here's Subatomic. That's one of those genius games. I'm going to put all those together at some point. The pull Subatomic, and in its place, we'll put Megaland. And that's not going to fit. All right, never mind it. The wizard always wins. Micarinos, Quirkle. Castle Panic. Why was Sab Atomic on that shelf? I don't think it. Munchkin Panic. I have the big box of Munchkin Panic, but just in case someone comes to this shelf. Citadels, My Happy Farm, Majesty, 10 Days in USA, which for some reason is not next to any of my other 10 Days games. Happy Pigs. Here's Periodic. We're going to pull that. That's going to also go with Genius Games. Colt Express. Lanterns. Splendor. This says Cities of Splendor. Actually, do we have Marvel Splendor somewhere? I thought we did. Because Marvel... Oh, it's right here. Never mind. And Grim Forest. Down on the bottom. Zoo Break, Micropolis, Traintopia, Super Mother Load, Gingerbread House. Hey, that's my fish. Celestia, Queen's Necklace, The Brigade, Zendo, Mr. Jax, Gizmos, Potion Explosions, and Survive. Uh, I think Mega Land put it in there. There we go. That's pretty. All right. Oh, no, not Mega Land. I'll put Foodies down there. Foodies is a real simple game. It did not take off the way Come On wanted it to. They were hoping to have a competitor to Space Base, but it did not happen. I hear a saw. Stages are being built. All right, folks, let's see. All righty, let's see what questions people have. Any damages in the move? I don't think so. We were really careful. I mean, we got a, spirits, but other than that. The what? Oh, your spirits? Yeah. We were all very tired. The these uh, We bought a truck with a lift, and so we just put a cover over each of these. We put it, these are wheeled. We put them on the truck, put up the lift, put it in the truck. The, the cover, you know, if the games go back and forth, it hits the cover. 
Uh, a couple games fell off the shelves, but games are fairly res resilient anyway. Um, that's 800 years a century. Yes. I have almost a millennium. <laughs> Nerd jokes. <laughs> Emerson should make a game called Millennium, but somehow, well, anyway. Um, how many game rules I've stored in my memory? Not as many as you might think. Do you have the expansions to base Pandemic? Yes, but they're not in the game, I think. Actually, they might be in there. I don't remember. I don't see them on the expansion shelves. Yeah. I suppose I could pull this out and open it up. I don't want to. Not yet. I'm going to be going through and opening up every single one of these games. That's another day. When I say day, I mean a long period of time. Are those shelves going to damage the boxes? Not particularly. We could have put... We thought about... And I still might do it. You know that rubber? Yeah. I could put that on the shelves. That's a lot of work. I guess long term, right? But... They're boxes. Boxes, yeah. Anyhow. Uh, the only, do you have any plans for the first official video from the new studio? Well, tomorrow, we're not going to be completely done with everything, but we're, we're going to do a crowd surfing tomorrow. That's our cold open, our soft open. Pandemic Iberia is selling for big money, is it? That can't be true. They, they're running low on that 10,000 print run they did or whatever. That exclusive print run? All right, let's put shelf 10 back at shelf 11. We're done no, with... No joke, you can't find it for 12 bucks that's funny. Someone, someone should have bought it all and then like... Are you still screaming? Still screaming. All right. Why, is it choice words? Oh, you better believe it. I'm only at shelf 10, right? Oh, wow. I'm okay. not even halfway. Ah. Yes, what? Speaking of beautiful, when they're all face, it, it makes me much nice. happier. Very, very nice. <laughs> I like it. That's a big deal for me. I like it. Uh, Unfortunately, shelf 10 marks the end of all the boxes are the same size. Oh, that's it. It's yeah. the end. It's all garbage on here. Got a bunch. This shelf's the worst, Mike. You know why? Why? History. Yeah, history is for losers. History. What? Only thing I know of people who like history is they end up teaching history. <laughs> like, I've talked about that. Like, if you're a history major in college, not a history education, right? history major, what do you do besides teach history or get a job at a museum? That's it. Well, you, could also, <laughs> <laughs> you could also just talk about history with people while you're unemployed, <laughs> possibly drinking. That's, just, that's the saddest story I've ever heard. It's the story of a, uh, a family goes into a Starbucks and says, oh, we're here to celebrate our daughters getting her master's in English. And the barista says, oh, I graduated last year, too. Okay. She's a barista. Like that's that's her job. She works at Starbucks. So that's what she's a master's degree in English. I don't get it. All right, let's move on here. You don't need a master's degree. I've taught, you, taught you. I've taught you well. That's what you do. All right. If the joke is dumb, you act like you don't understand it long enough to ruin the experience for everyone involved. In your face, G, it's dumb. I didn't say the joke was dumb. Yes, you did. You it. I said Z thought it was dumb. All right, let's move on here. It's history time, folks. Not necessarily the top shelf, but once we, the lower we get, the more historical it gets. Here we go. Campus Cafe, oddly enough, about being a barista. It's actually not a great game. I should probably pull this one from the library. I've never heard of it. Yeah. I'm going to do it. It's not a great game, and I don't, no one's going to play it. All, All right. those English majors. <laughs> Let's find one to go in its place there. That's that's too much filth. Uh, if I put New York Zoo there, that would irritate people that it's not with the other. I'm going to put New York Zoo there. Turn in taxi is a sort of antiquity. Holding on to Troubled Life of Billy Kerr. Also not a great game, really, but it's a neat, it's, it's an experience. 
Crusaders, Dark Moon, Bosk, Seventh Continent. That's in two boxes. I'll leave it there for now. Laser Races, Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. That's fantastic. Eminent Domain. Here's two of the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detectives. Why do we have one in three? That seems really weird. All right, anyway. A few acres of snow. Did you know that game's broken? Who cares? Epic Resort, Dinogenics, Orbis, 18 Littlefoot, Rurik, Genoa. Here's Pandemic Hot Zone, Pandemic Contagion. Why are these not with the other pandemics? Oh, because they couldn't fit on the shelf. No one wants to play Pandemic Contagion these days. Because uh, in this one, you are the disease. There is no cure. Not a tagline for 2021. No cure, more cowbell. This one here is in a Russian box. But this is... Uh, Oh, what's the actual name of this game now? This is um, Viceroy. I should probably get an English box because people aren't going to know what that is. Industrial. This is an old classic uh, uh, game here. All right. Supposedly, Lawn is going to be here at 10. That's 14 minutes. We'll see. Hans of Parks. I wonder if Parks, Parks, Parks should go on that welcoming game show. Let's see if there's a spot over there for that. Let me think. I've not played it, but I... Oh, you haven't played it? Never mind. I have yeah. a spot for it. What it sounds like to me. Oh, yeah. Parks is one of the most welcoming games there is. Uh, in place of Parks, we will put Megaland. I keep trying to put Megaland on the shelf somewhere. It fits! Primary modern art, Western empires. All right, now it's time for history, folks. Here we go. 1824, 1846, 1839, 18 CZ, 18 Chesapeake. All right, folks, before anyone yells, I'll switch the order of 1830 and 1846. There we go. Now, I know, actually, we have another 18XX game in, don't we? Can we have a double box or something? Yeah, that should have gone straight to the library because there was no way where I'm paying for there it is. Oh, it's double wide, too. Oh, man. Now I gotta move stuff around here. We'll move out the Great Fire of London and the Shores of Tripoli. I'm gonna try to keep these on the same shelf if I can. And we're gonna move this over. And here we go 1861 and 1867. And at this point, if you're coming to Dice Tower Library, that's enough 1800 stuff for you. I'm sorry. I can only go so far. City of Big Shoulders, which I heard is kind of like 18xx, so that's why it's there. Days of Iron, and then it's Academy Games Central. We got some Conflict of Heroes, 1775, 1754, 878, and 1812. Also out of order chronologically. Have you not tried City of the Big Shoulders? No, I, I heard it's a fairly heavy punishing game. And, I mean, I... Probably wouldn't hate it, but I just didn't feel like I needed to play it either. Okay. It's good worker placement. I like that. Is it thing. heavy and punishing? I heard it's the kind of game where you feel like you're you're not going to ever get out of a death spiral. No. No, you're coming to throw pretty easily. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking, or is that the, or is it, maybe it was that was super mean. You could be really mean to other players in it. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. You, you can sell shares of other companies to make their, make a move down on the track. I need to put these other games on this shelf, though. I need to... You know what I'm going to pull off? I think... I think... Uh, I think Seventh Continents need to come off this shelf. I don't think they belong here. That's bugging me. I'll put these here, and that leaves room for another historical game if we find one. Alrighty, down to the bottom... 1565, 1066, Freedom, Wings of Glory, Diplomacy, Caesar, Kingmaker, Blitzkrieg, Kansas, Pacific, Iberian Rails, Rolling Freight, Steam, Age of Steam, Steam Rollers, and Ride to Rails. <laughs> Train Central! Maybe I should have said that about this. Ride to Steam, Steam the Raid, Rail to Steam, Steam the Rails. Steam your clothing. Alrighty. I'm going to specifically request Campus Cafe at the next convention. <laughs> Go for it. 
We have a copy actually right here available, hundred dollars. <laughs> That's true. That's right. I'll be like, oh, we're selling it if you want to play it. Uh, where did you get the shelves? Probably Uline. Oh, actually, no. I think we got them at a. Uh... Actually, you can start. Chris, we're going to put all the games in those two piles. Let's put them in my office. Okay. Because I'm going to go through them all and pull any upgraded pieces I put in them or anything. Because I don't give those away. Anyway, the shelves, I think, came from uh, Costco. But you can get them from Uline. Uline's where we get all the different pieces for them, the covers for them. 118XX is more than enough. Well, I want people to have some, some, some choice as to what they, they can play, too. But I've stopped I've stopped backing eight new 18XX games. I figure this is enough. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them, plus Lilliput. And I figure if there's eight different groups of people playing 18XX at my cons at the same time, then I'm at the wrong convention. Is this the shelf I avoid? No, not particularly. I don't play it a ton. But I mean, the top shelf, I like a lot of those games. And I like the lighter historical games. Um, I just realized as you rearrange your shelves, you're also going to have to update your reference books. Oh yeah, but we update our reference books every time we do something like this. Alrighty. Here we go. That's shelf 11. Let's go to shelf 12. Yeah, I got a really big table that we can play really big games on. Yeah. And then with six chairs. And they had a sale and free delivery. Yeah, the lady's like, I don't understand why it's free delivery. I said, well, don't keep looking into it. <laughs> she was like, I got to figure this out. I'm like, no, we're good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at shelf 12. Alrighty, so we start at the top here with Christmas Tree, Waters of Nereus, Gunkomino, Ragusa, Crystal Palace. You know, Chris, I think Crystal Palace was the one I was thinking of. Anyway, Shipyard, Miramis, Homesteaders, Baseball Highlights, 2045, Adventure Island, Goa, Underwater Cities, Last Bastion, Manitoba, Captain Sarah family. Haunted the house. There it is. I knew it. I knew we had him. I don't even think Sonar family should go there. I'm going to pull that off. I don't like that being there. I'm going to stick Welk in there instead. Okay. So we got Francis Drake, Return of the Heroes. That's a game almost no one ever plays or talks about. It's a pickup and delivery game. Battle Stations. Here's Lords of Waterdeep. Quarterfacts or Quarriers. Quarriers is inside here. Cryptid, Bloomtown, Space Lord, Endeavor, Abe Caesar, and Millennium Blades. As you can see at this point, not a lot of cohesiveness between all these games. All right, until you get down here, Concordia, Navigator, Imperial, Imperial, some Matt Gertz stuff, and then Freedman Freeze, Fast Loss, 504, Power Grid, Futuropa, Fearsome Forge, Fable Proof, and I think, and I think I'm adding that new one in. Where did 
I put it. Uh, I knew I put it in the shell. I thought we kept it. Did we not keep the mail? In the free scam, I thought we were in it. Oh, Biome is a, uh, sorry, we're using it as a, to test the lighting uh, studio. Why? Just because Where did you grab Biome from? From that company. Oh. Yeah, Fiam's going to go here with all the other Friedman freezes. Like, technically, I shouldn't even have power. I mean, 504 in this grouping. Oh, yeah, 504 in the collection? Yeah, I mean, no one's going to be playing 504, but I think people might get it out and look at it. <laughs> no, I'm serious, and I didn't even say that to be... Well, it was a little rude, actually. There we go. I'm going to put Cryptid somewhere else. If you can right. find 504 for like a deep discount, it is a great prototype box. I agree. So this is interesting. Gucamino's up there, but I also have this one here. And I don't think I need both in the collection. This is the original version of Gucamino. I actually like this version better. <sighs> However, I don't need to. Which leaves me with a slot here for a long box. Yeah, that one's going out too. Okay. Hmm. What do I have that's long? I don't see any. They don't. They don't make that kind of game anymore, really. Ah. Well, I'm just gonna leave it open for now. Maybe I'll find a game that goes there later. All right. Then farther down, we have Tower of Madness. If you never played this, folks, this is a mix of um, Kerplunk and Cthulhu. Airship City, Basketball, Trans Europa, Ursoup, Lighthouse Run, Flip Ships, Nefridi, Factory Funner, Overbook, The Tail Pirates, The Flixed, Burning Suns, Police Springsteen, Through the Ages, Magnus Storm. Actually, Magnus Storm. Should go up there, or will it fit? Yeah, it will fit. That's a long box, which gives me room down here. And tales of glory can slide in. Hey, there's Sidereo Confluence. Roll for adventure: Nevada City, Unicorn Fever, Rescue Polar Bears, Rallyman GT, Tammany Hall, Couple Anzens, Chai, Fujikura Deluxe, Margraves, and Iwari. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. All right, and you had to upgrade the wheels. Yeah, but we have really good quality wheels on these now. They were not good quality initially, and we know that because we just replaced a couple and you could tell the difference. Um. You have Santa Maria on shelf 11 and the shelf behind you. Do I have two Santa Marias? On shelf 11? Where did I get the other? I know I have Santa Maria on shelf 1, but... I don't think there was Santa Maria on shelf 11. Do you see it? If you see it, we'll pull it. No, this is on the terrain and historical game. Yeah, I don't know what we're talking about. Okay, well, whatever. If someone can tell me where the other one is. Um, Tales of Arabian Nights. Seems out of place. Yeah, I don't know, but whatever. Um... Behind the other shelf. I still don't know what we're talking about. That is shelf one, by the way, that's behind this shelf. That's why it's there. 
No, I know that it's on the first shelf. Yeah. I just don't think it's on any other shelf. Have you ever lost a shelf of games during a move? No. <laughs> shelf 12. Anyway, I don't know what we're talking about. So maybe we'll find it. Like, I know there's a Santa Maria right here. This is shelf one. It's the very first shelf we did. I don't remember seeing another Santa Maria. But if we did, I'll pull it. so much folks for keeping boxes neat because this shelf ain't neat at all. Eh, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Alright, here we go. Small box central. These don't move well. You can see it's a big mess because there's not as much space with these. All right, so we have Bonanza Silver and Gold Hanabi, Escape, Cutthroat Caverns, Penny Papers. Hey, someone asked me earlier about Roll and Write. So here's one, Penny Papers. So each of these, I always, I laminate everything. So this is laminated. So we laminate. We one of the small pool uh, drawers over here. We have some little spray clamps. I always laminate everything in the in the uh, roll right. Sometimes I lay a pad of paper in there too if there's room, but sometimes I don't. All right. So here we have silk sleuth roll through the ages. Herbaceous. I just played herbaceous for the first time this weekend. Innovation Echoes, that's just innovation. Roll to the top, Truffle Shuffle. I feel like Truffle Shuffle. Yeah, never mind. Nubongo. This is on the expansion shelf, but this is a full copy of Fuji. Ah, so we actually, okay, so what happened was I just pulled Food Chain Magnet Expansion off a of shelf. They just got switched. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I gotta find a spot for Food Chain Magnet, then I'll find that later. All right, I'll well, leave that here because I might find a spot for it. Oh yeah, I'll set it up. Here's all these Tokyo games that some people like. Yeah, I'm not thrilled about the this, folks. How these are all different sizes, but what do you do? Nevermore, Flow of History, Biblios. This has got a new version of Biblios in. Yeah, I've never played either. So that's something I need to play out. Castle Burn, new card game, Dizzle. Not Alone, Railroads Inc., Blue and Red, that are so very different. And then it's time for Tiny Epic Land. Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, Tiny Epic Defenders, The Dark War. Tiny Epic Defenders, Beyond the Black. Why are we keeping, are these different games? These are just game expansions. What are they? Oh, yeah, Into the Black is an Ep uh, Galaxy's expansion. Is this one playable by itself? No. No. And these aren't going on the shelf. I don't even know if I'm going to keep them, but put them on the expansion shelf for now. Okay. That one is a uh, Kingdom expansion? This is also an expansion? Yes. So we got Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, Quest, Mechs, Zombies, Kingdoms, Western, Galaxies, and de <coughs> Defenders, and Tactics. I don't have... What's the newest one? Pirates? I don't have pirates. Hey, Mike. 
Uh, Roy? Yeah? Was that my pirates or Mike's pirates? Got up in where your pirates. Got it. They don't like me. You said you loved it. I don't want to take something that you love away from you. These are both party games, so I'm going to actually be removing these because I have a new party game shell. All right. A lot of empty space in this shelf, but that's good because we're going to be moving stuff around. All right. Here's Summit. Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Why that's not what the other betrayals is beyond me. I know I got betrayal. I'd... I'm going to put that somewhere else. Ah! But Cryptid should be on this shelf because this is now deduction stuff. Warsaw City Ruins. Well, not really, but you'll see. Map making. The gerrymandering game. That's actually quite a good game. King's Road. Here's Bites and Kingswood. And Fickle. And Horizons. Bargain Quest, Kill Dr. Lucky, Kodama, more rolling rights here. We got Super Scale Pinball Arcade, Veggie Garden, Bottom of the Ninth, and Condentier are moving up here. Because they're smaller boxes, as is After Nova. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that one. I don't know why I'm keeping that one. All right, Metro X. So we still have a lot of room here. But that's, we're going to be doing something down here. That's, I'm going to let me do this first. So then we have Time Story. With some of the modules, and then the new Panera Project, Mystery House. Chronicles of Crime. That's going to be replaced by the new box that they have for it. No, maybe not. I don't know. Escape Tale Awakening, Escape Tale Low Memory. Did I keep the other Escape Tale, the third one? Or did I get rid of that one? Do you remember... What was that one called? It had the, the girl on the hand. I feel like I would have kept it. <laughs> well, Cantaloupe has got to go on this shelf, which is a real pain in the neck. All right, then we have unlocks. So we have unlock, 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 unlock. These adventure games are moving up here because I have more unlocks. I know that. Where are they? I saw like all four of them somewhere. There's a pile of unlocks sitting somewhere. Are they your unlocks? No, no, no. They're on one of these shelves. They got moved. There was a bunch of new unlocks. Oh, there they are. Oh, oh. the old ones redone the big box one. Yeah, and I replaced them all. Yeah. And I found the other escape tails. Okay. So, the other escape tails are going to go here, and here's all the rest of the unlocks. So, we're going to have to do some maneuvering here. We're going to move these games up here. Horizons is going to come off this shovel thing. Let me. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to move these over, put the adventure games here, and then we're going to move all three of these up here. So these are the escape tails, and I have the new escape tails somewhere. I just put, where did I put it? I just had it. Did I already put it on the shelf? I go blind with the oh there it is. All right, so we have all three escape tails here. Now we have all the unlocks. I don't think these are numbered, so it doesn't really matter what order they're going. Unlock, 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 and Star Wars unlock. Yeah, I really like that. We're going to have another Chronicles of Crime soon go on this shelf. So I think we're going to leave that sit for now. All right, so if you're looking for escape room games, obviously we can't do the ones that 
you can only that you can only play once. But all the unlocks, this is every single unlock is here. Yes, I know they're all not facing the same way. I can feel some people saying that now. Oh, they're not gonna. Oh, here we go, like this. That's weird. Oh, there we go. Unlock. Unlock. The wrong way again. This one's the wrong way. That ain't my problem, folks. I don't know why they put them the wrong way. Anyhow, let's go to the bottom shelf. All right, I see a New York slice here. Huh. Did we not already saw the New York slice? I thought we pulled it off and put it somewhere else. Yeah, it's up here. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We pulled it off of eight. Well, wherever it is, this is already on shelf 13. We don't need two New York slices, that's for sure. I like New York slice, but it ain't going to get played that much. Here on shelf nine. You want to leave it on nine or leave it on that one? No, no, leave it on nine. Okay. All right, we got catacombs, catacombs, catacombs. Here's Core Worlds, Britannia, Mage Knight, Cerebra, and Britannia. <laughs> This shelf makes no sense, actually, but I just can't see. I need to put big games on these shelves, and a lot of little games that I have are already on another shelf. Uh, you'll see those a little bit later. Alrighty, this shelf could use a little bit more work, but at least I got all the unlocks together. Maybe they go like a pattern. Maybe I can do that. That will make it look better. Like up, down. Up, down. Up, down, up, down. How's that, folks? That looks better. Well, that looks awful, Tom. I'm getting, that looks like. Maybe they may, maybe they want them to look that way. Is that how they are? Yeah, because the other side of the box only shows like one, one of the three. No, no, that looks cool, actually. That's interesting. Yeah, it's weird, though. It rewards you for owning every single one of them, which why would you unless you were a library? Yeah, that's a lot of unlocks to own. Like, I don't know why you would... Like, after you own unlock, why do you keep it? No, I don't. Yeah, you yeah, give it I to somebody it. else, I assume. Oh. I'm surprised some of those games like Silver and Gold aren't in those photo boxes. Okay, well, actually, as far as I can tell, any game here does not fit in a photo box. Uh, Silver and Gold very specifically does not. Otherwise, it would be in one. I, I know that one for sure. Some games just don't fit in the photo boxes, unfortunately. And I think most of these fall into that category. Otherwise, they would be in one of those photo boxes. Um, there could be a fading sun damage on games in the top shelf that sits in front of the window. What? No. Oh. Uh, maybe. Maybe. If it becomes a thing, we can just put up a curtain. Yeah, there's only a, it's only a few games. We have a curtain covering most of them. We might do something about that. I don't know. Are the shelf heights adjustable? Yes, but they are a real pain to to move. Like a real pain. There's these things underneath them. You have to hammer them out. And so, yes, these shelves have more space in between them and stuff. But the problem is that when we built the shelves, they were all built at the same time. So we just built them all the same. Um... It is what it is. I, I, I don't want to mess with that too much. Isle of Sky is lost on this shelf. I don't argue that, and I may move the games on the bottom of the shelf at some point.
All righty. I think I'm caught up on questions. Let's go do shelf 14. If you didn't like the organization of the last show, you're going to hate this one. Because this one is literally, I don't know where else to put these games. All right. Here we go. Indulgence, Vault Assault, Paperback, Little Town, Divineer. Both to choose your own adventures. I guess two was enough, huh? We never saw another one. I don't know if the series did that well. No. Nah, probably not. Shards of Infinity, Harvest, 8-Minute Empire, 8-Minute Empire Legends, Nova Luna, Drathasar, Seals of Cthulhu, Eternal, Detective, and then we got Hardback on top of Villagers, although probably going to put a Citizen on top of Villagers. Now, these are interesting to have here, folks, because... Normally, when I have when we add new games to the library, if it has solo game stuff, I take it out because I don't think you should go to a convention and play a solo game. You may disagree, and in that case, I would recommend going to a convention that encourages solo play. But to me, if you want to play solo, you play at home, and you also you tend to hog a game up that other people could be playing. It just doesn't. I don't like it, with the exception of I put these books in. So if you don't have anyone else to play a game with, grab one of these books. Those are for solo, most of them. All right, Blood Bowl Team Manager, an underrated game. Trellis, happy little accident. So my TV, I have a Samsung TV and has weird Samsung channels on it. has a Bob Ross channel. So I watched Bob Ross the other day, and I thought he's an interesting teacher. I guess you could learn a lot from him. But I don't get the whole, like, fervor around Bob Ross. He seems like a nice guy. Anyway, Bobak. Symphony number no. nine, Heimlich and Company, Gravwell. That's being reprinted, I believe. Thought they announced a reprint of Gravwell. I think so, right? That coincided with NASA Week. I don't think they meant to do that on purpose, actually. Dragon's Gold, Civilization, CB, Ganymede, The Estates, New Bedford, Tiki, and Innovation Deluxe. And you know, I just realized if I have Innovation Deluxe, I don't need that other innovation. Even though it is a nicer looking version, it's the yellow version. There's no reason to have two innovations. No one's ever going to play them. Tim's going to play them. Huh? Tim will play them. Does Tim like innovation? He loves innovation, yeah. I find that Tim likes, like, uh, very interactive, heavier games. I think that's his jam. Not heavy games, per se, but games that have a great deal of strategy. Mm. All right, Gaia. Pastali. Here's where I think I can stick Horizons. Well, maybe not. It's too... I don't like the size of that box. Cave Troll. Battlesheep. You should all try a Battlesheep out someday. Battlesheep's great. Wayfinders. Paper Tales. Jetpack Joyride. Does that not stand up? Oh, it's the same. Okay, never mind. Bloodborne the Card Game. Folks, Master of Respect is a highly... Missed game. This game is fantastic. Highly recommended. This should actually be in my top 200. I wonder if I've missed it myself. Viva Java, the coffee game, the dice game. Ridiculous name. Res Arcana, Dungeon Academy, Ship Shape, The Final Hour. This is from uh, Arkham Horror, and 
honestly, this is only in the library because it's newish. Uh, no one likes it. Nobody. Not even the designer. I don't know if that's true. Cosmic Factory and Letter Tycoon. Then we have Ascension, 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 Ascension. Sorcerer. Dungeon Fighter, Arcanos. Boom, one, two. Paranormal Detectives, Attack on Titan. Didn't I already have Attack on Titan? Oh, this is a deck building game. All right, Legacy. This is a cool time game. First and goal, Room 25 Escape Room, and I think this is where I'm going to stick Captain Zona party. Maybe I don't know why. All right, bottom show. Race for the Galaxy. Look how sad Race for the Galaxy looks all by itself down there. Taxi Derby, Machiko, Project L. Project L should probably go on the welcoming game show. Let me see if there's room for it. Zendo off that shelf. I'm going to put Project Dell on that shelf instead. There is a Pandemic Pit box. Which one? Uh, it says it's in the lab, and I would reckon that it might have this stuff in it. It might have all the expansions in it. Alrighty. Ra, Arc Ravels. Of course, Arc Ravels would go on that welcoming shelf. Maybe I'll make two welcoming shelves in the future. Hit Zero, Cosmic Run. Hey, here's Micro Macro. Whitehall. Actually, I'm going to put Micro Macro on the shelf I was just on. It'll be a stage room stuff. Oh, yeah. Probably we're not live anymore. We're still live. I'm not done yet. How many people are watching? 21. I think it's actually like 400. Alright. Gladius. There's some brand new games on this shelf. Mage Wars. 100 Tory. Devere. Radis Cardis. The Exchange. Alright, this is where I'm going to put all those science games now. Cytosis, Periodic, Subatomic, and where's the bean one? I know I got it around here somewhere. Where is that bean game? Hit me! Well, you want the bean game? I want to be beaned, because I know that's where that might have headed. Come on! I have a, I have a one by four I can beat you with. How comes that's never you? I got you grabbed a one by four. It's always a two yeah. by four. Yeah, one by four. four. It's sturdier, baby. Half, half is impressive. <laughs> I use two by eights. Yeah, I'm tall enough. All right, I know that bean game's around here. Which bean game? That new one. No, that sees the bean. No, it's uh. That's the fruit. No, that's a good game though. Uh. You're not helping. Um, <laughs> no, I'm talking about uh, from the, the Artipia games, people. Where you work a placement game, they make all those science games. Oh, Genotype. Yes, I The bean game. It is a bean game. I wasn't lying. I'm just putting all the science games together. That's our science corner. What about for science? No. <laughs> it, it's our partial science corner. <laughs> All righty. What do we got here? Let me, let me answer some questions. I don't hate Bob Ross. Good grief. You opened yourself up to this, Tom. Yeah, you're right. I did. Have you bought a new shelf just to fit all the Marvel United and Marvel Uni and X-Men United stuff? Well, first of all, the X-Men United does not come out till next year. And Marvel United, I'm going to be able to get everything I want to put on the shelves for it in three boxes. One will go on the expansion shelf. Two will go on the main shelf. Uh, it's just going to be a while before those get on the shelves because they're not painted yet.
That's true. I could see Bob Ross being a good thing to fall asleep to in a positive way. Unlike the Dice Tower. Let's see here. Maybe you can put foam spacers behind the games. I've thought about that. In fact, I bought some foam stuff to put behind the smaller games. But it's, it's, it's trickier than it sounds. No comment on Cave Troll? Cave Troll's okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's not great. Oh, they're beans, not peas. You're right, they're beans. Sorry. Huh, that'd be interesting. You go listen to Bob Ross on the iPad Com app. Interesting. No, 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 no. Uh, you can see all the fronts of the shelves when I wheel them in the room. All right, that's shelf 14. All right, folks. You know what time it is now? It's party time. I'm not sure how to deal with unmatched. Off for the last spectacular. Are we done with uh, the library store? The library. What are you waiting for? Am I getting murdered? Is, it, is, is, is the live stream on? Let me know when you're done. Let me know when you're done, when you're done being live. <laughs> I'll be over here sharpening my machine. Right, so I don't wanna... I'm gonna I'm gonna pause my live stream when it gets closer to lunchtime, which is quite soon. I hope you enjoy your final lunch. <laughs> Machete! That's that's the name of my new game, The Final Lunch. The Final Lunch? I guess that's okay. That's not a terrible name for a game. What's it about? Uh, a bunch okay. of people at lunch, one of them's gonna die. It's, it's a social deduction game, of course. Oh, jeez. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, I hate everything about it already. <laughs> is there a, is there like a, a, a poison sandwich, but there's also antidote cards and laxative cards? Like, what's going on? Ah. Uh, Come on, I'm just starting here. Uh, it's it's a, there's salad. There's a point salad. I'm, I'm out. There's a there's a point salad. There's a, a mini game. There's a filler. Um, you 
just doing all the food puns? Is that what you're doing? Uh, yes, I thought that was obvious. Uh, oh, here's more party games. All right, folks, this is a big mess here because we pulled a lot of party games for our last spectacular, and then we didn't put them back. Cause, not because I'm lazy, but because moving. we were moving anyway, and we knew that, that I was going to be doing this. So give me a second to pull the, the party games off here. Haunted Mansion, is that a party game or no? Not really. That's like that. That's like that whole. Um, it's your typical uh, funk over uh, style. Game. Yeah. Okay. I think I got them all. Ooh, the bonfire. That is. Bonfire is a. That's quite the party game. That's on my second step on belt shelf. <laughs> I'll be building that later. Yeah, I think there might be someone here. I don't know how these got on my second party shelf. Import exports. No, the whole pack. Packs. <laughs> Greenland, Neanderthal. Those are not party games at all. Although, I believe. Yeah, some of this stuff is. There's such a thin line between party and dexterity. Like, ice pools might go on a party. I don't oh, know yeah. Why they're next to a roof, to be honest. Oh, whatever. Okay, folks. Food is quite the party game. Alright, it's time to party. Alrighty, here we go. So, I'm going to reorganize this shelf completely. Um, I think. This is what the people came here for. Complete reorganization? Yeah. Or, or thoughtful pausing? You want me to knock the shelf over for you? Please, please. No. Alright, five minute marble. I wonder if I have five minute dungeon. I know I have five minute, whatever the other one is. Escape, tower. Five minute escape, is that what it is? Five minute deduction, or, oh, I can't remember now. Anyway, there's always also the possibility, folks, that some of these games simply went to, um, uh. The nice ranch where old board games go? No. <laughs> no, they, some of the games went to. Uh, the kids section, possibly. All right, well, let's... All right, so Telestrations. I'm going to pull Meeple Circus off briefly. We're just going to do straight party games. Meeple Circus is party, for sure, but it also has that dexterity element mixed in. I'm going to pull Mysterium off, because I want to put that on a different thing. All right, Hail Hydra. I saw someone in the comments said it's a terrible game. I like it. Um, one key... Do you know if we have extra OB backs? Or was that it in there? Uh, how many are we missing? Uh, there's like one or two shelves that are missing over here. Like all of them? Yeah, like shelf 11 here doesn't have any backs on it. Well, you saw the things that came in, right? If we don't have more. I don't know what boxes that came in. They're just sitting on the front of the shelf. Yeah, I'm saying if we don't, I mean, they're, they're, they're so long. You would. You would see the box. Look and see if you see a box that long in the garage, and if you don't, then count how many there are and I'll order them. Because we got to get, you know, we have to have them. All right. I'm going to put Camel on a slight different shelf for now. Okay. So next to one key, I'm going to put What I Dream from up here. And next to one I dream, I'll put hues and cues. I don't like that side of one I dream. There we go. That's a better looking side. And then concept. Okay, so now we're going to pause. We're going to pull off this one and this one. We're going to leave Detective Club here. And next to Detective Club, we're going to put. Dixit. 
And then next to Dixit, where's Mysterium? It's going to go here. And, oh, and, sorry, when I dream, it's going to go here, and then I'm looking for Muse. Where's Muse? Muse, Muse, Muse. Here it is. All right, so Muse. Then, next to all those, all right, so I'm going to actually kind of rearrange this a little bit. So here we go. Right here, we're going to put the Surreal Cards, the Mega Box. This is a big pile of cards in here, huge amount of cards that you can use for Dixit, Muse, Mysterium, and Detective Club. And When I Dream, I guess. They don't work as well for When I Dream. Um, but uh, you can use them for that. And so we'll put that here. You can just check this out of the library with one of these five games. I thought there was two Muses, but I might have put them in the same box. Okay, so now that that's done, let's get Wavelength back up there. We're putting in hot party games on the top shelf, because that makes sense. Uh, um, why do these shelf covers come with this particular one? This is on our shelf covers. I'm cool. All right. I got seven kids. Yeah. Yeah. You, you might want to like, hold them at a distance. <laughs> Word Slam, Decalco. Yeah, I feel like that's good. We'll leave that the way it is. Okay. Obscurio has round cards. That's why you can't use that with the other ones. Smarty Party, Rhino Hero, Hex Hex, Menace Among Us. This is kind of a social deduction. I'm going to try to put those together for now. And I should actually have both Rhino Hero, although this is the giant edition of Rhino Hero, which is awesome. So Hex Hex. Deja Vu is a small party game. Oh, here's another Dixit. I should have that up here, too. Dixit is the only party game I could think of that people would play two of. Say anything. Wordsmith. There's Word Slam Jr. All right, here's another social deduction. I'm going to put social deduction together. One night. I don't have any other social deductions I missed, right? I don't think so. All right. All right, let's make, let's put all of our code names here. So we got code names, code names Disney, code names Simpsons, code names Blizzard, code names Pictures. Isn't there a Marvel code names? I thought there was Marvel code names. We do have one. We've run it to the studio. All right, then let's look through these shelves. There's, it's got to be here somewhere. Then I just probably said. Maybe it fell over here when I grabbed the other code names. It is easy for Marvel games, though. To, it's the most used and abused license at the current moment. I finally figured out what that, that did. That's the uh, that's staple gun. That's the phone. No, I know it's a staple gun. Oh, what were you just doing with it? Yeah, I was trying to. I wasn't really thinking about it. Why would I be missing Codenames Marvel? Unless for some reason I said I don't need Codenames Marvel. But I don't feel like I would have done that. Well, I'm leaving a spot for Codenames Marvel. We for sure have it. Meanwhile, we have the big Codenames, which of course don't fit on this shelf. So I can't put them up there. Alright, never mind. 
All right. Well, meanwhile, let's keep putting out other things on here. We got Dream On. That's a cooperative game. But wait, there's more. One of the best party games you'll ever play. Catch the Moon. That's a fun, cute game. Um, let's bring down 20 Second Showdown and Half Truth. All right, we'll leave a spot for Codenames Marvel whenever I do find it. All right. Next, we have, you know, moving down. Spit it out. Smart 10. We're going to move the Spy Falls to the deduction category. Work sign family, stay cool. There's a Time's Up, Letter Jam, Shadows Over Amsterdam, Let's Go, Wolf, Stringamajig, Pictures. After Pictures, we have the Just One. I'm only keeping the new edition of that. Um, Master Word. And not deception. Again, I'm going to be putting, I'm going to have a whole other shelf, folks. The, all the, the, the social deduction games are going to go on a completely different shelf. I know they're party games. Uh, here's Deja Vu. I just feel like they, they work well together. If you're looking for that kind of game, Crypto, Game of Thrones. I don't know how Sushi Roll is on this shelf. Sushi Roll is not really a party game, so that's coming off. We'll make this shelf dexterity style game for now. No, not really. Bang and Bang Duel. Those are going to the Social Deduction Shelf. Who's it? Okay. QE is not really a party game, but it also is. I'm going to leave it on a party game shelf because I feel like it's weird. Banned words. Didn't I say this was going to be the... I did say this was going to be the dexterity area. Well, let's... Okay, so to that end, we'll put shootles here. You know, if that's the case, then Catch the Moon should go down there, too. And I look, folks, get off my case. Strike. It's a terrible thing, but I put it in the library because I know people like it. Igloo Pop is definitely dexterity-ish. And that seems to be all the ones that are dexterity style. All right. And I'll put who's it there. And of course, my version of faces. Oh, I found Codenames Marvel. there all along inside us uh, these go to the social deduction shelf the real code is marvel were the friends we made along the way that's true that's why you've never played code names marvel eh? I'm trying to figure out what you're saying about I don't actually know it sounded like it should have been something there well, that's a question. Subtext mental blocks. Okay, so now there's room on this shelf. Since I pulled off, we'll bring down Fun Employed and Medium. And Cross Clues. 
So now there's room on the party shelf. As soon as I remove social deduction, I think that's a good cutting line, don't you? Oh, I forgot Meeple Circus. That would go with these dexterity ones. Okay, so there we go. I was trying to figure out how I was gonna put party shelves, party games on two different shelves, but if I'm doing if I'm doing party games on one and deduction games on another, that makes more sense. <sighs> All right. Oh, Rhino Heroes are not with the dexterity ones. You're right. I don't feel like moving them. Blank Slate is behind the show? Oh, yeah, you're right. Thanks. And you guys are super helpful. You would think these games get played a ton at cons, and they don't. But that's like, this is the one place you should, like at night, this is the shelf you should go to and just grab a game off it. If someone checks out a game out of the library at the con, do they have a time limit on when it needs to be re brought back? And someone here says, yes, before the con ends. I cannot emphasize how wrong that answer Very is. Very wrong, yeah. You bring it back. As soon as you're done playing it, you borrow a game, you play that game when you borrow it. Oh, by the way, here's Camel. That also goes. Have you done a video over uh, campaign, or um, not campaign, uh, convention etiquette? I probably That'd be a should. a bad idea, right? I mean, that is convention etiquette. You don't keep a game and, and you don't take it up to your hotel room. Well, that's not allowed at my cons. Right. But even if you it is allowed, you shouldn't do that because mm -hmm. you should be... You should be. You should do to others what you want them to do to you. Right. And you don't want to go to the library and you can't find the game. Right. Um, and there's so many games in this library. You should. You know, right. Just if play the another first game. one you're looking for isn't there. This yeah. is what happens at cons, and maybe some of you have done this, and I'm calling you out on it because I think it's wrong, it's selfish, and it's when four people are playing together and mm -hmm. they each check out a game. Right. And then they oh, play one game, and they keep the rest and they the keep table. the other three there, and they're like, "Well, we don't want to have to keep getting up and getting new games." Mm -hmm. First of all, you need exercise. Secondly, that's just rude. You are yes. literally putting a box there that other people can't play. You're like, but then I might not get a chance to play it. Then play something else. Okay, I'm getting old. So foxy. Play Scythe. The one that Tom talked about. Those are... Those are... Are these different or are these the right. same game? They're both called Around the World in 80 Days. They are different games. Okay. Even though they're both... The one is Around the World in 80 Days is Around the World in 80 Days. It's, it's a race to get around the world. The other one is a reworking of Heron Tortoise, which was the first... Spiel is Yara's winner. Uh, that's yeah. the that's the yellow one. That's this newer one. You know. Yeah. So it is confusing. I could make it more confusing if I put them on the same shelf, but I don't do it for that reason. Yeah. All right, folks. Um, Have you had a shelf for Tales and Game series? No, uh, the only one I have is uh, in this library is the Heron Tortoise. That's the only one I think adults would play. Maybe there might be one other one, but they're not. Heron Tortoise is. Convention games. They're not really convention games, right? Band Words on the next shelf. Yes, I agree. Band Words is a great game, folks. It's better than Taboo. Well, it's actually interesting, you know, because I didn't think about it. We don't really have a lot of. Um, Those classic. Classic party games. I don't think we have any of them except maybe uh, Boulder Dash. I'm getting a phone call. Let me take this real quick here on air. Tom Bassett speaking. While he does that, I'm going to look at this. Frankie Rockin' Vegas. I have no idea what this is. And me being from Las Vegas, I kind of have an affinity towards games about Las Vegas. There's dice, and there's a score pad and a pencil. I was holding the rules in my hand. I was going to make fun of the fact there were no rules. Oh, oh look at the size of this font. Much. It's huge. Oh, uh, yes. <clears throat> Spiel wo oh, bereut. So Jeder Spiel wufeld mit Eilen Frankie Wilfong. Für die Misten Blitzer. This is not going to work. Sure, if you do a van, I would, I would grab it, you know. Oh. Um, okay, well, I mean, that's a week from today then, right? 
Why have I never heard of this? I love finding Las Vegas themed game. This is from 2019? This made yeah, zero no sense. Frankie the Monster, formerly known as Frankenstein, is taking the Las Vegas casinos by storm. It's time to rock right, thanks, and sir. roll those dice. Each round, players will roll dice and attempt to assemble the highest scoring combinations. Have you played this? Okay, sorry. Um, that's not that good of a game. I'm getting rid of that one. Yeah, I was going to say, have you even played it? No, I just like the name of it. I've never even heard of it. Yeah, I, I think Z reviewed it. All right, um, folks, I'm going to pause the stream here because I'm going to go get... I'm going to pause just because we need a break from being on air. And uh, I'm at show 15. I'll be back somewhere in the afternoon. I'm going to eat lunch, and I'll come back later. So we're just going to end this for now. Um, and I'll be back with the show six if you want to keep watching this sort of thing. Thank you, everybody, for joining in and watching. I hope you enjoyed it uh, or not. Maybe it was a good background thing, or maybe you're sitting there yelling about my organization of games, for which I apologize. Anyway, until later, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Oh, I guess I, I have some sort of intro, outro here, right? Yeah.